<laughs> oh, movie. No, I'm just kidding. This movie was a piece of shit. Oh, no, my you're God. Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Codex Nation's Comic Character of the Week. Hello. Where we take a deep dive into one character and give you all the stuff that you need to know. I'm your host, Sal the Slab Guy. And when you cannot find me here on Codex, head on over to YouTube. Check me out there because on YouTube, I go under Sal's Comic Corner. And sometimes I even go to Instagram and, and there, I am the Slab Guy 77. As always, I'm joined with my usual partners in crime. Down below, Dan the Man Kelly. Dan, won't you tell everybody where they can find you? Uh, well, when I'm, here. well, when I'm not doing Codex stuff, uh, I'm sitting in my basement doing uh, obnoxious Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonations for whoever would <laughs> care to listen to me. Uh, uh, me and watch- Sonny, uh, I'm yeah. going to watch that episode again. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, watched the podcast last night, I did I did a lot of Arnold. <laughs> some some funnier than others. Ooh, and I'm okay. on uh and I'm on uh Instagram at Dan Kelly Art. So go check it out. Give me a follow here. I'll give you a sneak peek. This is what I've been working on. I just finished the main figure today and I gotta start doing the background. Oh nice. That's oh, nice. That's great. So, you know, start penciling the background tomorrow and then start the inks, I guess. Next week, I don't know. Hey, who do you got next to you? Green oh. arrow. He's got green arrow next to him. <laughs> <laughs> and at least it's green arrow, all, all with his uh, pieces intact. There you go. Yeah. Y- yes. And, and his arms. You know, because what's <laughs> green arrow without both of his arms is in the you know the Dark Knight Returns. That's what happens. <laughs> I was just going to say the, that's the version of the figure that Sonny has. He that is exactly he, right. Oh Sonny customized his Green Arrow figure so that it could be like Dark Knight Returns. Like yep. you don't need this rip. That's that's too much. Oh my god. <laughs> well, Dan, go ahead and give your introduction for the man next to you. Then. So yeah, it's the. Uh, He's the master of the squared circle. He's the curator of the library of comics. You know, the he's the man that women want him, men want to be him. Nobody can touch him. Nobody can touch that collection. He's the man, the myth, the legend, the Ric Flair of comics. He's Uncle Gary. All okay. right, and and we saw. Thank you for that great introduction. And we saw the um, Snoop jumped in with the green shaft there. Yes, Snoop, yep. my buddy, Chris. My brother, thank you for the creepy. Uh, yeah, that's one. awesome. Tim had something to tell you too. He. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, well, first off, Bougie, good to see you, man. Glad you're in the yep. chat, Snoop. So glad you're here because I want to give you Absolutely. a big thank you, man, for uh, the books that you're giving Uncle Gary to send my way, and you signed them too. I am beyond excited about that, and I cannot wait to get those in my hand. And uh, I, I just finished a, a pictureless book, so I had to really read. Um, but uh, you'll have to again. I'm very excited to get into those. Those look absolutely amazing. Thank you. No very Cheetos, much. Tim. No Cheetos. No, no, che- no Cheetos on this. Don't All right. Tell me how to live my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's it's great to be here with you. Um, you can find me. I'm at. Uh, Comic Logic is uh, where is that? There it is. Comic Bougie. Logic. <laughs> Bougie says he stopped listening to Exhumed for this, so blow his mind. Oh, get ready, buddy, because oh. you're about to give your O face. Oh, oh, right. my. oh, oh my. <laughs> Um, Comic Logic, Loudoun County, Virginia's uh, only <coughs> comic book store. You can catch me there Wednesday mornings, getting my uh, injection of four color ink. Get in here, gives you muscles. Reading comic, I told you, reading comic books gives you muscles because. You start with just a single book, then you're carrying a stack of books, then you're carrying a short box, then you're carrying a long box, and you're stacking them here. You're stacking them there. Next thing you know, you are stacked. Because you're stacking, you're jacked, baby. So read some comics, build some muscle. That's what we want to do. Head over to Comic Logic. We also do a Facebook Live show uh, the first three Thursdays of every uh, month. Um, The first one's our previews uh, show. The first uh, Thursday, the second, third one are You Grumpy Old Nerds, where it's myself. My best friend, Mike Harbour, our principal owner, Rob Kalin, and we sit and talk a bunch of nonsense tonight. Dan and Sal joined the nonsense, and we had our our a good buddy, Chris Laxon, that joined us tonight, who's a huge Green Lantern fan, and we invented a whole new Green Lantern Corps, the Brown Lanterns. <laughs> the Brown Lanterns, and it was it was something, wasn't it? I'm like sure. It? That's right. No shit it, will escape their sight. No shit will escape their sight. <laughs> what do you mean? Yep. From, from, what is it? 
<laughs> in bright from the darkest hole. Yeah, yeah. No lube in sight. <laughs> no lube in sight. That's right. Wear his power. Jesus. Yeah, wear right. his power. Yeah. Oh, so we created the brown lanterns. Oh my God, it was a, it was just a stream of consciousness nonsense tonight. So tune in, you grumpy old nerds. We'd love to. Uh, Love to Do have it. you join us. Oh, yes, yeah, good oh stuff. Oh, my Lord. So that, that's where you catch me. Also, uh, comic character of um, the day, the site our good buddy Archduke Kevy found it. Yes. Um, it's the reason we are all acquainted. It's the reason that we're here talking to you is because of that great site. So I do the covers of the day. Um, Dan does question, a, a random panel question of the day. Sal's always contributing on there. And Tim's always ever vigilant, always watching oh, to make sure we are giving you the content that you deserve. And speaking of our man up there, Tim, our man with the golden larynx, the man that speaks to us in deep, wonderful, dulcet tones, like his voice cuts through the air smoothly like an arrow leaving Oliver Queen's hands, going all the way through the air silently until it hits his mark. Huh? Oh, hey, oh, nice safety in effect. Love how you do that. Lord. Wrong weapon today, but very nice. Tim, <laughs> Tim's voice cuts through all the nonsense because it is those smooth, silky tones. He is our, he is our combination of Dr. Johnny Fever and Mel Torme, all one. He's the Velvet Fog, and he is the DJ that we all need. He is the DJ that we deserve. That's what he is. He is here for us, expounding upon our our, our information, it. giving it to you through these air view, airways. And when we and we give you the information, it's one thing, you know, you, you kind of hear it, but when Tim gives it to you, it resonates and it sinks in and it sets with you and it's there with you all yeah. night long. Oh, Tim, right. the terrible. Ladies and oh, gentlemen. No, no. <laughs> oh, no. <my. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my lord, what a beautiful introduction by an equally beautiful man. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the chat before I tell you what you need to do to be super awesome like the rest of us here. Uh, Snoop says, uh, don't thank me until you read him. It was my pleasure. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, I can't wait. That, that, just the title, great. Tripping Over Reality. What a, what right. a, what a great title. Well, Done. Snoop, we were also told that you are a military guy, and so thank you for your service, sir. There you go. Absolutely. Bougie says comic books gave him diabetes. Well, because they're so sweet, I'm sure. They're so sweet. <laughs> At 50 chocolate bars. Snoop also <laughs> says, uh, by uh, tickling my brown ring, I will make your hemorrhoid sting. Oh, oh my God. This We've got to add that. We've got to add that to the, uh, and, to the, to the oath. And this is perfect. He is now quite uncomfortable, as you should be, sir, as you should be. That's you know, how we are. You know, after a movement, you'll feel better. <laughs> so there's, there's this guy that goes to the doctor. Oh, and he, no. And he tells the doctor, he's like, doctor, my ass really hurts. The doctor was, what, where? He's like, the back, my ass, like right in, right in my ass. He goes, well, which part? And he goes, the entrance. What can you do? And the doctor says, well, as long as you refer to it as an entrance, it's going to keep hurting. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if that you kind of want show. comedic content like this all the time, every time, Uncle Gary's going to tell you what we want to do for uh, you. Oh, here, we want you to know that here at the Codex Station, every single damn one of the hosts that you see, we have all the socials. We have all the socials, and we would like nothing better than to give them to you. You got it, dear. Uh, at the Codex Station, your favorite social media platform. Best way to support the channel is to hit that like, share, subscribe, and follow wherever you're watching us live right now uh, at the Codex Station. Also, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, memberships and super chats are now available right here on YouTube if you feel like you want to support the Codex Station in a financial manner. We would be forever grateful. Also, uh, the next morning when you wake up and your entrance is sore uh, and your exit is equally lubed up and prepared, uh, Dan's making coffee, Sal is uh, sitting in his easy chair with a cigar and a slab, and Uncle Gary has disappeared yet again into the void that is the <laughs> Library of Comics. Uh, head over to the Codex Station so you can get some merch, meet the team, and so much more. Once again, the CodexStation.com for all your Codex needs. There you go. Wait, right. you, 
the new t-shirt design that I sent to Jamie. I can't wait. That he's very happy with. <laughs> tell us what it is. Tell e us what it is. Eternals here, gentlemen. Hey, How's Eternal? you How you doing, buddy? Hey, and Snoop a... just uh, shattered himself. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, it is a t-shirt design. <laughs> It is a t-shirt design that has been discussed in the past, and I finally sat down to draw it. I hope that uh, the suggestion that I gave you was added. If not, then okay. But uh, I was not able to add it. I tried. I tried drawing it in there, and it just didn't it, work. It just it didn't look right. That's fair. Okay. It didn't look because the expression I wanted to have on the face of just the like you know just that. that yeah. It didn't work with with that suggestion, so I had I went with it as it was. But that's fair. I'm I at least you tried. That's that's all I ask. That's amazing. but uh, you'll uh, you'll see eventually. Sal. I can't wait. <laughs> all right, all right. So we got. Uh, do we want to dive in? Or we want to well, give it another four minutes or so. I'm ready. Well, oh, God. before dive we dive in. in, just I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I want to give a shout out. I'm. Doing double duty here. Our our best friend Kate, her nephew is a starting goalie for Boston oh, yeah. College, and God damn it, they just fuck, they just scored. Boston there you College go. There All we right. go. There we go. Awesome. So Jacob Fowler is his name. He may even win the Richter Award for the top goalie in the country. He's got 31 wins as a freshman, set an NCAA record. Um, BC is number one ranked team, and I know for a fact, well, inside information if you're betting, he is sick as a dog tonight. So I hope he. I hope he uh, can maintain it. But uh, looks like go. BC went ahead. They're, they're looking at a goal. They're doing a review. Hopefully we'll be okay. But anyway, just I want to give some love to Boston College and Kate, who is there at the game watching it. So here yes, at, playing Michigan. Here at Codex, ladies and gentlemen, we multitask. Uh, we multitask. Greg, Litho, good to see you. Glad you're here in the chat. Bougie. Hey, in oh, the look, at that green arrow, look at that green arrow cover. Nice. In, into <laughs> ah, the yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's cool, Dan. Mm -hmm. Sal, I'm Good ready job. whenever you are. All right, let's do it. Do you want me to click the buttons? I got Can it. I click the buttons? I'm ready to run some upstairs and grab my Coke and my uh, I am a good my ice cream okay. sandwich. All right. Let's have some groovy base. If you're not back in time, you're putting a penalty box, buddy. That's right. It wouldn't be the first time. I live my life there. Penalty <laughs> box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys right. ready? Yes, sir. Hit it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We will be back in 45 seconds. Whether you and like it or not, go, yeah. Dan. <laughs> I love the green <laughs> of the green lettering for the comic character of the day. Yep, oh, yep. Yeah. I'm just I'm getting better at that every week. We could have, you know, That's I'm great. doing a fresh new design with that. That's awesome. I'm doing good. Sal, you Welcome, took that and and ran with it by God. I know. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Codex Station's comic character of the week. We take one character, one character, and we do a deep dive. We give you badass moments, we give you top covers, we give you must read stories. And of mm -hmm. course, we're gonna have chats from the from the from the audience there. We're gonna be interacting with them. And we're going to be talking all about the Emerald Archer tonight. Oliver Queen, ladies and gentlemen, the Green Arrow. So, Dan, do you want to finish your chewing there before you give us the details? Or do you want to <laughs> want me to ramble on a little bit more? I can no, ramble. I can, I can take a break. <laughs> all right. I can take a break. Eyes. <laughs> Dan, Jamie give us the info on this guy. Jamie's here. Hey, Jamie. You're, you're fired. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think you can fire him. <laughs> okay, how about we suspend? He's suspended without pay. He, he's in the penalty box. He's in the penalty box. There Ten minutes. Is he is he in Minnesota where this game is being played right now, or is he in Wisconsin? He's, he's in Wisconsin, in, uh, Chicago. I, or, I believe. Oh, is he in Chicago tonight? Yeah. Is he out of town? Snoop, however, prefers Oliver Close off. Wow. <laughs> oh wow. Hello, Oliver Close. I used to have a shirt that said Phil McCracken. <laughs> At least a Kraken. <laughs> I, I think we're not are we the pre-show show? okay I, no, no we're we are show. not okay, okay. We're live show. this is this this would have been better for the power girl episode but <laughs> when 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 um the uh when the movie uh that said release the kraken first came out what was it Clash in the, the titans Clash yeah. of titans in the 80s the yep. big line release the krakens the most well-endowed gal at our high school was Joan McCracken, and all we could think about was, "Man, I wish oh she'd release the McCracken." God, <laughs> nice, <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> That's a great movie, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. All right, yeah. Dan, are you ready to give us the info? Or are you still working? I've been ready. Thank you, Dan. Having your having your tomfoolery and your shenanigans. <laughs> Tom, Tom shenanigans. Foolery and shenanigans. Tom Foolery. He shenanigans. went all Irish on us. Look at Jamie that. Jamie says I'm already giving you more time alive, and it's gone the moment I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barbara, what's You're still suspended without pay. You like with the mozzarella sticks and all the crazy shit on the wall? Uh, shenanigans. Shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Green Arrow, uh, first appearance was More Fun Comics, issue 73 from November 1941. He was created by Mort Weisinger and George Pat. And, I mean, I know Uncle Gary will know this, but do you guys know who else had their first appearance in More Fun Comics, issue 73 from November of 1941? Uh, was it Alan Scott? No, it's the swimmer. It's the swimmers. The it would be... Um, it would be uh, Green Arrow's sidekick, Speedy. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Aquaman. 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 I own more fun comics number 75, which is the third appearance of Aquaman, wow. Green Arrow, and Speedy. And on the cover, it says new Aquaman. So first time Aquaman was on a cover. The the, the nice. word. Yeah. Nice. Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, so I'll, you know, his origin, it's it's been... Not really changed, but it's been a, you know, there's been changes made to it little bit by little bit over the years. Um, but it all essentially stays the same. Oliver Queen is rich. He gets stranded on a desert island. And while on this island, he has to teach himself archery so that he can survive. He makes his way back to, you know, back to his life. Great and save. then he, what'd you say? Great save. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I have the disappointing game on the background right now. Too, so. And then he makes his way back to civilization, becomes the gr hero, the Green Arrow. Like I said, there's been, you know, there's been changes made to it, you know, as to how he got to the island, what happened to him when he was on the island. But it's essentially, you know, that's the origin. As far as his powers. You know what did what did um Ben Affleck say in Justice League? I'm rich. <laughs> His powers are he's he's rich. He's an expert level archer. He's um you know an expert hand to hand fighter. When he was created, it was very much uh it was essentially Robin Hood as Batman because mm -hmm. he had the arrow car and the arrow plane, and arrow cave, and the arrow cave. And did he eventually get an arrow cave, or did he call it the quiver? He never called it the quiver. Oh, never God, called that it was quiver. a great line when he's like, damn it. God. That's, a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Here, here's, a, here's a trivia question for you, though. So he first appeared in November of 1941. When did he get his own self-titled series? Now, he starred as the lead in, in series, you know, over the years. But when was it that he actually got no idea. a Green Arrow self-titled book? That would be in um, <laughs> uh, nineteen eighty something. Well, there was a mini before that. <laughs> yes, the mini series was the first. Eighty four. It was, was yeah. nineteen eighty three. It was a four issue mini series that was the first mm -hmm. time that it was a Green Arrow book. That it wasn't just you know 
more fun comics or adventure comics with Green Arrow. Snoop, it was not long bow hunters. Uh, the mini series yeah. came the out. Mini series long came bow hunters. There are only five heroes that have been pretty much continually published since the forties. So, Superman, yeah. Batman, Wonder, uh, Wonder, Wonder Woman, um, and uh, Aquaman and Green Aquaman. Arrow. Aquaman yeah. and Green Arrow. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Aquaman and Green Arrow were continuously published as backup features. But they were continuously published. They would bounce around from World's Finest yeah. to Detective mm -hmm. to um, um, Action, even being so, co-stars in other characters' books and mm -hmm. all that yep. stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now we got the uh, origin story out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump to scenarios that work best. And you know what? I'm going to go first on this one. Ooh. Ooh. And, uh, so, so what works best for them? I. I Two, two things really stand out in my mind with him. He stands up to anybody with powers, with no matter what. He's like he's like the voice of the conscience of people. It's like, yep. no, your ass is doing this wrong. You 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 know you can't do this, and I don't care if you could like melt me with your laser eyes or whatever. I you know you're doing this wrong. He stands up to yeah. anybody at any time, as long as he you know he's he's always standing up for the right thing. He's always protecting the, the little people and the, the the innocent or the powerless. And he doesn't care who he stands up against to protect them. And that's what I think one of the works with best with him. Also, what I like what, what works best with him is when he partners with with Dinah, you know, the Black Canary. Mm -hmm. I think the two of them have a very good fighting or combination, to, uh, you know, cohesion together. Dynamic. A dynamic that's yeah. very well done and very well written. And when it's very well written, it's, you know, you could tell that they work perfectly together. That's what yeah. I think. So Dan, how about you? What do you think works best? Yeah, I like when he teams up with her. When he teams, up, I, I like when he teams up with the Satellite Years, um, um, Justice Leaguers. Not necessarily like the Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, yes. but yep. yeah, yeah. When it, basically like the ones that he you yes. know kind of teamed up with in Identity Crisis that were like mm -hmm. the second tier kind of leaguers where you know he was in that which it's strange that he wasn't in a, a founding league member considering that mm -hmm. you know you like you said five characters continuously published all that time four of them were founding league members and then there was him that was the first one to the first non-founder to join the league yeah issue but, four he wasn't late you know when that late is issue yeah the fourth issue yeah but um but yeah, I like yeah. You know, when he teams up with them. I like, yeah, I was going to say, I like when he's just annoying the shit out of Hawkman, <laughs> uh, when he's annoying Batman. When, uh, was it this? Was it Obsidian Age? It was when in Justice League, when they had to have the new, like, kind of replacement league, and it was Nightwing and all of them. And there was this great scene where, you know, they, ha they had all the new leaguers together. And there's a video of Batman that he had recorded before you know, the league disappeared and he's kind of giving them the breakdown of like, you know, this is what we're, is happening. This is why we chose all you people and, you know, and all this stuff. And you just see green arrow just constantly talking in the background of like firestorm and all these different characters. And then at one point, Batman in the pre-recorded video just screams, shut up queen. Cause he <laughs> arrow was going to be in the back, just running his mouth. Yep. And yep. I thought that was great. And but I really like when how he is always willing to stand up for what's right, mm -hmm. even if it's against the law. He's not looking mm -hmm. at it like, oh, well, this is against the law, so we got to do this. He's like, no, there's okay. right and there's wrong, and he's going to err on the side of right, whether you know whether the law has anything to do with it or not. And it gets him, in, you know, and it, and he um, you know, comes into conflict with you know with some other team members because of that, which. You know, that kind of led to the whole thing with hard traveling heroes. Which we're gonna talk about later, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> All right. Maybe. That's Ma maybe. maybe. <laughs> wow. All right, Gary. Are you, are, Dan, are you finished with that or yeah, I'm I'm done. All right, Gary, how about you? What works All best? All right. I I think he works best when he is the conscience of the Justice League. Because here he is. He's a mortal man, and yes, yeah, so is so is Batman. But the difference with the Arrow, Batman's got a mystique about him that kind of exceed, you know, kind of um, exudes far beyond mortal. He's got this mystique that everybody fears him, this and that. Arrow is just a—he's a common. Even though he was rich, 
the arrow that I like the best is the one that is broke, that's lost all his money, which happened in, um, I believe the first new look green arrow was in um, Raven the Bold 85, where he lost his fortune and Neil Adams and, and um, Kaniger might have written that though. Well, I know during this run, he is next to destitute yep. as well. Ab absolutely. So he's lost yeah. all his money and he has put down another level. So he was a rich boy. And he's seeing what it's like for the people that are struggling. And that's where he finds his voice. That's where he finds mm -hmm. his conscience. And these these other heroes that are, you know, in the satellite era that Dan talked about, that are gods upon, on high looking down. He's keeping them. He keeps them grounded. And he's also like in a great episode of Justice League Unlimited. He, who watches the Watchmen? He watches the Watchmen. He's mm -hmm. keeping yep. them. He's making sure that that they have their eyes on, you know, the everyone and not just these high minded yep. you know um threats and all that and the hard traveling heroes is one of the greatest comic works ever so we'll we'll get into that but when he is that voice that conscience and he is the um you know he's the epitome of what chris said uh what snoop said the downtrodden he, he is, yeah he is the hero of the downtrodden and he's a guy that has built himself into the hero he is with skill right and, and he and he does know how to appreciate and he is a flawed individual he is flawed. He is, he can't keep it in his pants. He is the captain. <laughs> he is the captain Kirk of heroes, right? Him and Dick Grayson yeah. have uh, a him it's the mustache. You know? But but, but the thing about Dick now. Grayson, though, Dick Grayson is is getting his share. Ollie does it while he's with somebody. Ollie's <laughs> a cheater. Ollie's a cheater. He he has he has moments of weakness when he's with someone. Yeah. So that those are his flaws, um, very much so. And you know that's a very um the underdog is very true man. and it's just a very complex character and he knows he's flawed mm -hmm. he accepts those he accepts those flaws yeah. he's he's guilted by those flaws and i'll read a passage later on from the longbow hunters i mean i'm sorry not the longbow hunters but from the hard traveling heroes when he mm -hmm. finds his um when he finds speedy as a junkie his reaction to that is just awful just mm -hmm awful and again gets into what a great piece of literature the hard traveling heroes is but that's when he's best when he is you know he's speaking up for the downtrodden and he's a character that has these flaws but he owns them and he lives them and he keeps striving ahead and that's yeah that's what i like about him he has no powers but he is all skill baby all skill all heart yep i agree with that all right tim what do you got uh, so all of your points are valid. They all make well, Oliver right, Queen <laughs> absolutely fantastic and a wonderful character and sometimes an underrated character. I think he uh, gets lost in the tumbleweeds sometimes with some of these bigger characters. Um, but uh, the things <laughs> a guy named Speedy, a junkie, say it ain't so, brother. <laughs> Sorry, Snoop. I hate to break yeah. the news to I hate you. To press <laughs> Spoilers for those that haven't read the issue yet. But uh, no, the things that I think work best for him is his passion for those he loves. Not necessarily family, but those that he loves. Like like his friendship with Hal Jordan is, is some of the best in comics. Yes, absolutely. Right? Them guys go on vacation together, right? They, they work together and then they go on vacation together. Uh, they are the best of friends. They do everything together on their downtime most of the time. Uh, and uh, even, e they're almost like brothers. I mean, basically they are. They they fight. They have spats. Uh, but they take care of each other. They lift each other up. They motivate each other. Uh, and and it's, it's wonderful to see in any iteration for, from mainstream DC to Elseworlds titles. And they're opposites, which is so great. Yeah. Hal's well, establishment. He's a cop. Yeah. He's a space cop. He's establishment. Oliver Free Queen's very <laughs> liberal. Yep. Yeah. He's a squeaky I, I wheel. Like He's a yeah. squeaky wheel. I like to think that they too, that the two of them keep each other in check. Yes, very so, much so. They yeah. do. Yep. Uh, his love for Dinah is, I think, when when it's written really well, uh, mm -hmm. it's it's better than the Peter Parker Gwen Stacy uh, relationship. Uh, I I think it is absolutely. Except Wells. 
Fuck All hell yeah. zip well. No. <laughs> there were uh, if, um, check that off. But uh, I we no. You out. triggered Tim. Sal, you triggered Tim. I Oliver, do. Oliver Queen I'm, and I'm Dinah's relationship. He calls it pretty bird. And, Sip and, <laughs> and 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 it's it's so true. Like when you read it, and and he says pretty bird. Like he's not saying that to be silly or or facetious or anything like that. Like that is a term of endearment to her, and she accepts that wholly and fully and lovingly. And it is wonderful and beautiful to to see. Another and she can kick his ass, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> she she doesn't take his shit at all. But uh, them to where That's Hal true. and Oliver complement each other and are opposites of the same coin. Uh, she is Oliver Queen's weight, right? She, where he may keep the league grounded, yep. she keeps him grounded and and down into reality. Yep. Hey, you're up there dinking around with gods among men. Get your ass back down here and fight the street level criminals, man. That's where you belong. Uh, but but the one other thing that I love about Oliver Queen is when he's cocky, cool. Right. Yeah. Because because he knows he knows that he is good and he knows that even though he is in a team with a bunch of people that could obliterate him with the blink of an eye, he can stand toe to toe and fight the long fight and push them to go farther. Uh, and and it is so awesome, like like where Batman may be like uh the the tactical part of the team and superman may be the backbone and wonder woman is the fist or whatever oliver queen is the heart you know and and that's why he keeps the justice league so grounded he is their voice of reason he is he is right in their ear uh sonny says isn't green arrow a copy of shaft from tim's favorite team young blood ah, that's debatable the the court the jury's still out on that one we don't know. Your mouth. <laughs> but yeah, those those are my favorite things about Oliver Queen. And you know All something right. cool about him too is how many other superheroes are known for a specific recipe that has actually been published in a comic book as well. What, yes, the, yep. chili. Yep. Chili. Yeah. Right? yeah. I, I have that listed with my badass moments. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's a great where they published it. It shows the leaguers sitting around the table, and there's a bunch of different reactions. <laughs> right. <laughs> some some of them, some of those powerful members are having severe reactions, yeah. and some of them are, are pretty cool. I think it's Batman like, was like, okay, this is good. It's like yeah. an alarm <laughs> chili or something right. like that. You Super see Superman, hot. He's like spewing out steam. Uh, now, Dan, have you ever made that chili from his recipe? Uh, I have not, but from what I understand, the uh, spiciness of it is – in real life is overrated that it's not really that spicy. That's probably good for me. I don't need it that spicy. <laughs> I get heartburn thinking about I, it. I, I just know. sent the uh I just sent the recipe in the uh in the Facebook chat. With the picture? With the picture of the league? Yeah, well no, no it's, 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 the, it's the image of the recipe card right from the comic. But does it have the picture with the league sitting around the recipe card? I think it has. Uh, no, I think I, I think. Just, I just, okay. it, it has, Superman, it has Superman blowing. Oh, yeah. there though. And, and I think, I think the Martian Manhunter was dying because it was fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you look, at, you look at the recipe. There's not, you know, hey, there's not a ton of spicy right? stuff in it. Yep. It's like a couple tablespoons of stuff and that's we'll it. We'll make it when we all get together in Baltimore. And we'll we'll yes. try and we'll be the judge of it. Well, right. you know what? I'm not I'm not eating that in Baltimore. I got work to do. I can't be <laughs> I can't be in the hotel on the on the commode for two days. <laughs> no, we're gonna make it in your room. We're gonna set up a hot plate with a that's pot right. and yeah. cook it right there. Right okay. there. Yeah. Uh, why not? Let, me write, let me write that down. Note to self. Don't let them know what room <laughs> Mess with your entrance. Oh, my God. Hey, yes. that's a reference okay. to a dirty joke from the, uh, the preview. The pre -show, ladies. ladies and gentlemen, if you get here in time, you can catch jokes like that during the pre-show. Yeah, that's right. We have, we have special filth just for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to the next segment. Go. We got badass moments. Speaking and... of speaking of entrances and exits, badass moments. Badass moments are next. Uh, Gary, kick us off on this one. Oh, dude. Uh, 
man, I've got like five. So I, I, I should have, you know, I should have, you know, so if I'm, maybe if I'm doing ones other people have, I'll move on. Um, That's all right. Uh, no, we'll repeat them. It's all good. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah. All right. So, um, so my green arrow badass moments are, uh, you know, I think, uh, and cry for justice um, after Roy had been named, lost his arm after his granddaughter Lan had been killed. Prometheus did it. Green Arrow gets to Prometheus's lair. Prometheus can't say a damn thing before he's put an arrow between his eyes and he kills him. And he just leaves the body there. He did not waste any time. No, there was no, you know, there was, there, there was nothing. It was just, what are you, right between his eyes, killed him in a second. And Prometheus had no time to even process what was happening. That That's just about as cold-blooded a killing as a hero has done. I mean, I, I guess the only thing that would be more would be if he shot him in the back. <laughs> but, but, you know, just, yeah. just. He wanted him to see who yeah. it was. See it he wa- right. He yeah. wanted him to see it, but Prometheus could not even, comp- you know, could, could, couldn't even maneuver from that. It was just, bam, he was gone. I don't think he could fathom that a hero did that. Yeah. Oh, and the line says what Prometheus didn't realize was Ali wasn't a hero. He was a hunter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So that, that, that was badass writing. Um, in Green Arrow Volume 2, which is his first ongoing series um this was just I, I picked this because it was a bit of a departure for him he gets thrown into a room that is full of yakuza sitting around the table and he picks up and he, he's I talking mean, about this ladies and gentlemen yeah he's right talking about that he is dead meat but he gets a hold of an uzi and slaughters the room with the with the automatic uh, weapon and kills him and this is disgusted and throws it away at the time but just to see him pick up a, a gun, you know, a, a, an assault. Those are weapon. little arrows. Yep, little arrows, little, little <laughs> arrows. And just shoot the shit out of everybody. I yeah. thought that was quite a badass moment, him using a weapon that was not his. And we don't usually see superheroes. We see Frank Castle do it, but we don't usually, yeah. usually see superheroes pick up a gun like that. Um, and... All right, I'm going to ask you guys so I don't give away something from yours. I got two to pick from, either the thing from The Dark Knight Returns or what happened in Green um, Arrow 101. Uh, Anybody I got Dark Knight Returns of, on my list. Yeah, Dark okay. Knight Returns is on mine, but I don't care if you say it. If yeah, okay. Else I do. I'm going to let you all say I'm going to go with Green Arrow 101. In the last um, issue that he starred – or that he was in his his own that first ongoing series that Tim's holding up the book for. Yeah. He, he is he is involved with um eco terrorists and he realized that they are a lot more um radical than he thought they were. And to get his um cooperation at one point he's in a plane and they have him in like a doomsday device where if he removes his arm from it it's gonna explode and take his arm off. And Superman comes on the scene as going to pull him out of there, but it, he still, you know, he, he'll lose his arm and the arrow will not allow Superman to save him because he does not want to lose his arm. So he hadn't read the Dark Knight Returns yet. and He didn't know what you could do with just the one <laughs> arm, but he would rather die than to lose his arm. No, yeah. his bow arm. So I, I thought that was pretty badass and he would not let Superman save him. And Superman had to be a witness to him, you know, exploding yeah. and dying in the um in the Can't save everybody, big blue. Yep. <laughs> so that those are my those are those are my badass moments, and I think you all will cover okay. some, cover yeah. some of the others. So that's good. All right, Dan, how about you go next? All right, well, you mentioned Dark Knight Returns, so I'll say that one that it's in issue four. You know, Batman's having the fight against Superman, and to help Batman win as Superman's beating the crap out of him. Um, Green Arrow there in the future where he he only has one arm, has an Mm -hmm. arrow that's tipped with this artificial kryptonite that Batman had created, and he shoots his bow with this kryptonite arrow while he's one-armed after he's been shot in the leg, and he's dangling upside down, 
and pulls the bowstring back with his mouth and shoots the kryptonite arrow at Superman to help Batman win. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just... You remember why he has one arm? You oh, you? uh, geez. Uh, it was like toward the end when when all the heroes were retiring. Um, yeah. Some shit. No, he lost it somehow. He was maimed. <laughs> he yeah. was maimed, so he couldn't use his arm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was crippled, so he couldn't be effective. Right. That didn't work out so well. <laughs> yeah. God, uh, I haven't read another, that in a while. So. And what, was it Superman it. that did it? I, I kind of have a very possibly could have been. Yeah. Uh, another one I have is, you know, Gary usually you know has talked about before. He'll have these um, yeah, you know, moments. smaller moments. So it's from the series 52 it's from issue eight there is a shoplifter that's running out of you know star says this disaster zone now and there's a shoplifter that's running out of the shop with his arms full of diapers that he's stolen and the shopkeepers running after him scream stop thief thief so green arrow shoots his arrow with the rope to you know wrap around the wrap around him but he doesn't get the thief that's stealing the diapers. He gets the shop owner and stops him from catching him. And elongated man, Ralph Divney is hanging out on the roof with green arrow. And he goes, you missed. And he goes, no, the guy said to shoot the thief. So I shot the guy that's charging $30 for disposable <laughs> diapers in a disaster zone. Yeah. There you, go. Be, you know, like I said, you know, the best scenarios for the character that speaks to who the character is. It's not, yeah. just, he's not looking at it solely as, Oh, this is against the this guy stealing diapers. It's against the law. He looks at it as what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, yeah. It was well. That, uh, that's kind. Of, that's kind of what happened in the hard traveling heroes, where in yeah, that first issue seventy six, where Green Lantern comes to meet him in a four mentioned spot, and the people that live in this building are are pelting this uh, guy in a suit with bottles and cans and things like that, and Green and uh, the Lantern defends him and. He says to the arrow, what's wrong with these people? Why why are they attacking this man? And why are they mad at me? He goes, I was going to throw something at you, too, for defending that scumbag. He's a slumlord. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that reminds me of that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then the last one I have is my favorite. It's from uh, Identity Crisis Issue 3. It's when they're, you know, when the League is fighting Deathstroke. And Deathstroke is there and has and knew in advance who he was going against. And it was, I think it was like the first time that he fought most of them and he had time to prepare and he just, just goes through all these league members. Like, like he wiped the floor with them. Yeah. Like yeah. nothing. Wally, the you know, Wally West flash, Hawkman, Adam, Zatanna, Green Arrow, Black Canary, um, who else? Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern. I mean, he goes through all of them. Like they're nothing. In fact, when we when we did the Deathstroke episode, I listed that as one of my badass moments for Deathstroke because he just like bam, 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 takes them all out, and um, and Green Arrow, you know, comes up behind him, and comes up behind him, and you know he had cut his bowstring, so he stabs him in the eye with an arrow. Now he even said he's like, <laughs> yeah, I know that you know, he stabs him in the eye with the eye patch. He goes and he says something. I forget the exact quote, but he says something like, yeah, I know that you know. This eye doesn't work for him. I also know how much this hurts. And then <laughs> yeah. Deathstroke just loses his shit after that and even says, and that's the first time that he, you know, that he kind of, you know, became unhinged there. And Deathstroke loses his mind and lunges at him and just dreams like, I'm going to kill you for that. <laughs> but he does it while he's got an arrow. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, Tim, do you want to go next or do you want me to go next? Yes, because nobody's mentioned it yet, and I'm so glad, and I have the book oh. sitting right here. Okay, like, I, hope, uh, I hope you're not taking one of mine. Okay. Oh, right. Deceased. So, The Scene in Deceased. This is one of my favorites. Uh, Bougie here says, just watch the Deathstroke episode. It was another good show. Thanks, Absolutely. Bougie. So, uh, I'm going to show you, oh. right? So, Visual time, ladies at, and gentlemen. Spoilers, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, if you don't know already, in Deceased, Aquaman is a uh, zombie, and he brings forth the Tempest, oh, right? And uh, Mare is standing there, and she's at a loss for words. The Kraken is out. All these zombie oh, the Atlanteans <laughs> are coming, and Arthur is standing right on top of them. And uh, the next panel... 
the next panel is him getting shot <laughs> through the eye with an arrow. And Mara looks over and there's Oliver Queen standing there. He's holding the arrow. He's like, Batman didn't think I could be dangerous. Just fired an arrow half a mile through raging winds into the brain of an undead king of the sea while he was controlling the damn Kraken. Fuck you, Batman. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That was one of my favorite parts of the whole series. And it was with one of my favorite characters. That, that That's just so badass to me. Like, like Batman had been undermining him up until like the point of death and stuff like that. And, and Green Arrow was like, I'll show him. Fuck well, that guy. Well, that's one of the other badass things about uh, Oliver is <laughs> to stand up to Batman and not take. Oh, yeah. Him. Yeah, yeah that's he, true. he's not taking his shit for nothing. That's yeah. right. Uh, let's see here. Some of the other badass moments. I brought receipts. So <laughs> um, the I'll gloss over these because like that was the main one I wanted to talk about. But uh, mm -hmm. where Green Arrow uh, shoots Sinistro with an arrow. Oh, I yeah, got yeah. that. I got that. Well, my bad. Yeah. I'll let you talk about that, Sal. Right. Cool, um, cool. We've already talked about Green Arrow in The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, where he shoots with his teeth, and that is yeah. just so amazing. Uh, right. The one where he took down Hal Jordan when he was possessed by Parallax. Yeah. That's my next one, too. Yeah. yeah, I'll let you talk about that. Uh, let's see here. There's there's just so many. Uh, yeah, uh, in Kingdom Come, he was a major part of Kingdom Come. Yeah. Like, every yep. panel he was in was freaking awesome. So, yeah, that... That's the main one I wanted to talk about. Sal, you got the rest covered. Go for it. All right. So let's start off with where he puts an arrow in parallax. So here, here's the scene. This is a zero hour number zero, I believe, yep. if I remember right. Yeah, because they and counted down from four to they, zero. They went from four to zero. Yeah. Which, uh, funny story. When I went to my comic book store and I saw the issue four, and I'm like, oh, hey, this is great. Do you have the other issues? He's like, oh, no, it's going in reverse. I'm like, well, that's <laughs> confusing. <You know? laughs> Bam. He, here's the scene here. Um, Parallax is um, being drained of his power through various different uh, uh, mm -hmm. people. He's about to kill, uh, I believe it was Damage uh, he was about to kill. And Batgirl jumps in the path, and she gets killed by him. And then at that moment, uh, Kyle comes up, puts him in like in a, uh, almost like a headlock. Like a full Nelson kind like of thing? Like a full Nelson type headlock. And that's the point where Oliver goes, I have to, I have to put him down. And he puts an arrow in his chest. And kill yeah. basically like dead killed center him. in the dead in center the, in the symbol and everything. Yeah. And the most emotionally moving moment with that is you see a, him at a statue of Hal Jordan later, and he just takes his bow and he just he shatters it against the the, the statue, like because he's just so distraught that he just had to kill had to kill his best friend. So he it was like almost like he was like giving up being the arrow because he could not take that guilt or that. Yeah. Or that you know, being distraught over having to kill his best friend, that was just so emotional. Those panels, there was not a single word on those panels. It was just him walking up to the statue and just, just smashing his bow on it, and then like screaming towards the sky. A very emotional moment for him. So that's why I consider that a badass moment. The next one is um, I got is that Green Lantern Rebirth number four, where he actually uh, was, yeah. gets a power ring, and or it was like Hal's backup power ring, I believe, or or an emergency <laughs> one, and he actually manages to fire off a single arrow into Sinestro. But before this, Sinestro is like wipe up the floor with the, him and Kyle. Yeah. And and he asks Sinestro, he goes, he goes, it's, is it the mustache? Who you get your, who does your mustache? I gotta know because I want to do that with mine someday. So yeah. he's making fun of Sinestro's mustache. I love your mustache. Being, getting Thinking about getting, getting mine well. trimmed like that too. So <laughs> he gets the power ring and he would he starts doing the chant the the oath not the chant the oath. But he can't remember the whole thing. So he's like, you know, blackest day and brightest, oh, whatever. You know, <laughs> that type of thing. And Sinestro's like, I can hear you, Oliver. And all of a sudden, you see Oliver shooting out a single arrow into Sinestro. And he's like, you know, he's like, oh, well, that was cute. But then that's at that point, Kyle had managed to regain his, yeah. uh, you know, his wind and save them both. But he could see how exhausted he was after doing that. And he's like, I can't believe that that was so exhausting. I feel like I haven't slept in days. He goes, does that feel like that every time? And Kyle's like, every single time. Every wow. single time. Every that time. was like a pretty badass moment for him to muscle the willpower to fire off a single arrow. And 
yeah. So that was a definitely one to check out. Green Lantern Rebirth number four. So Bougie, my has, a, Bougie has a question real oh, quick. Yeah. He says, didn't Oliver have a talk with dead Oliver or whatever in the Kevin yep. Smith run? He did. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Because okay. when he came when when he came back in the Kevin Smith run, it was after Hal brought him back, he didn't have a soul. And yeah. he didn't even have all of his memories because he you know he didn't want he didn't want like all the memories of his death and him having to shoot Hal and all that stuff. He didn't you know, he didn't want to remember that. Yeah. Right. Okay, Sal, sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. So my last one is, is actually kind of a funny one, but his chili actually reminds the, the godlike Batman that he is actually more human. Because there was a story where I, play, I believe God, uh, Batman was in the uh, Morbius chair. Yeah, you know, that... Um, oh, yeah. Right. It, it was a godlike Batman, and, and uh, his chili actually reminded Batman that, oh, my, yeah, I'm not this person. I'm not this god. I'm actually <laughs> a regular human being. So it was just a chili. Not even anything he had to do, just the chili was able to wow. do that to him. So I thought that was pretty pretty funny badass. That's great. Well, I want to throw one more in there. I I do it. I could have sworn that one one of you guys would pick this. Yeah, I'm waiting on one too. Yeah. All right. Uh from Longbow Hunters. Yeah, that's the same one. Bonus. Yeah. When he bonus one. Yes. Bonus bonus badass moment is when he shoots and you know, Dinah had gotten captured and they, you know, she'd been tortured and she's there in the warehouse and she's like chained up and hanging there and her clothes are all ripped and Green Arrow just shoots the guy there, like no fuss, no muss, just shoots him, kills him dead on the spot. And we, you know, me and Gary interviewed Mike Grell, and he talked about that, yeah. what an important moment that was for him, because he was like, you know, look, this guy is a master marksman. He doesn't miss. That's that's what he does. He had to make the conscious choice that he was, he was like, he could have shot this guy and just disabled him, you know, shot him in the leg or in the shoulder or something. But he made the conscious choice because of what this guy did, you know, to die mm-hmm. that he had to go. Yeah. Yep. Wasn't that like the first real time he took somebody's life? Yeah. I think well, so. I mean, that was the first time he, like, that that's he, the first yeah, time. Was. He, for, no, one of the first time he killed somebody. It's the first time he killed somebody intentionally. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, so that he made that choice, and that also had ramifications between him and uh, Dinah's um, mm-hmm. relationship after that, you know, where she didn't quite agree with that. But he, 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 you know, this was his woman, and seeing that guy do that, he made the choice to end him. In yeah. the in the hard traveling heroes, that series went from Green Lantern, Green Arrow 76 to um 89, with 88 being a giant size, it didn't have a new story, but anyway, it was canceled. The book continued in the in the pages of the Flash because they had other stories that were drawn and 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 and, and um, written and drawn. So two Flash two seventeen to two nineteen had a storyline where he was injured, and he made a shot, and it and the injury made him jerk his arm, and he hit a hit a hit a guy and killed him. Okay. And Green Arrow, because of that guilt, went to an ashram, shaved his head, swore off the bow. Wasn't yeah. you know was not going to pick it up ever again because of the guilt of killing that person, and um, in the end it kind of ended up being a badass moment where he had sworn that off and Hal and Diner trying to get him to, you know trying mm-hmm. to say it was a terrible accident you didn't mean to do it we need you as a hero and he had a, and Hal was getting ready to get killed by a guy that had a rifle and actually had a scope on it Green Arrow makes a great you know he he, he breaks away from where he was restrained, makes this diving roll, gets a bow, arrow, and lets loose a single shaft, and it goes up into the um, sight on the right. Oh, wow. Dams and, yeah. I mean, it doesn't kill the guy, but, you know, it, it hits the guy it's in the like face. right knocks, there. Yeah, it knocks. Well, the whole rifle comes back into his grill and yeah. knocks him out. But that was pretty badass to do yeah. all that, yep. you know, all in one motion and let it go. But that was the first time I know of in the comics where he actually killed somebody. And that was, you know, we're talking about 1971, yeah. 72. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. I mean, you, was, you might, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. The, the Longbow Hunters was the first 
intentional. The first intentional one. But then again, like, I don't know. I'd have to go back and read some of that Golden Age stuff because some of the stuff they had those guys doing back then, <laughs> they were just <laughs> dropping bodies like it was nothing. So, you know, who knows? Well, when we did the Spectre episode, we picked up the dudes in a car and he was yeah. just outside and he just crushed it and made it into a little ball. Right. Wow. Right. I mean, yeah. Batman had a sidearm to start out. Yep. The, Joker, the Joker was supposed to die at the end of his first appearance. They had, right. all and had to add one more panel to it because they're like, oh, this guy's good. we got to bring him back. So, <laughs> wow. Who knows? Yep. He could have been out there dressed like Robin Hood, dropping bodies left and right. With <laughs> I never noticed. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's jump to our next segment, which is critiques and criticisms. And this is stuff that we don't like about the character. Tim, why don't you go ahead and give us first on this? Uh... Things that I don't like, that's tough because, like, he's one of my favorite characters. Uh, I I think that, uh, like, I, I know a big part of his identity is uh, political, like, like being a super-duper liberal and stuff like that, or libertarian, I think, is a better way to put it. I don't think yeah. he's so much li liberal as he is a libertarian, and those are two very different things. Um, but uh, when when they use him as a vessel for politics in comics, like like I understand that uh, that it's that that's part of his identity. But like when when they cross that line, right, of hello, it being Richard, Richard hello, uh, when, when they when they cross the line of it being fiction, fictional and the writers put themselves in Queen's position instead. Uh, that's when it goes from, from teaching a lesson and telling a good story and leaving a lasting impact to being preachy and uh, overtly political and degrading to one side or the other. I don't like it when they do stuff like that. Um Beyond that, uh, I, I think that is the only thing that uh, that I think works the least, works in the least favor for Green Arrow. Okay, very good. I'll go next on this one, and I kind of agree. It's I, what I think, too, when they, um, they're not using Oliver Queen in the political, a political thing in the story, but they're mm -hmm. actually pushing their, the writers, their, agenda. their yeah. agenda through him into the story and I can, you know, I wouldn't like that either. Oh, yeah. um, other than that, really, I don't really have a problem with the, or anything really critiquing about him. He's a fantastic character. So there's nothing really, I can't say, Oh, I don't like that. He's super strong or I don't like these, mm -hmm. you know, whatever he's, he, he has a fantastic backstory build up to where you can understand how he's able to do these things because of yeah. the story that was written for him. So it's not like saying he's, Oh, that's unbelievable. But, well, no, because he's had this train to do this type of stuff. Uh, Snoop know? is exactly right. He doesn't use just, boxing uh, glove arrow near enough. In, in the uh, arrow verse on the CW, he does use a boxing glove arrow one time, and that was it. So, <laughs> in, in, the Grant, in the Grant Morrison remake, uh, relaunch of the Magnificent Seven with the JLA, when he had them and Connor was a part of the league. Yeah. There was a great episode. I want to yeah. see nine or ten, and the key was there, and Connor had access to his dad's trick arrows that were in the league uh, league uh, uh, trophy room. Yeah. And he sees the boxing glove arrow and some of the others. He goes, oh, dad, you're going to be the death of me. You know? <laughs> and, and he ends up taking out the key with the boxing glove arrow. I mean, that That's was great. Yeah, that was yeah. fantastic. Well, there was a All scene right. in, um, when Meltzer did it. There, there was a scene of him with the boxing glove arrow, too, when he was having to, like, refamiliarize himself with it. Was it In, Meltzer's run or, or Smith's? Meltzer did like the first twelve issues of uh, Justice League. He, he also did. He also did the art. I'm talking about, about the Green Arrow. The Green Arrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Unknown. All right. So Dan, what do you got for stuff that you don't like? Um. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of along the lines with you guys when they ignore these key aspects of his personality. There's a, like you said. There's a difference between writing a character that is liberal or that is um is he certainly very socially liberal mm -hmm. like that you know there's there's no way that you can argue that um, no like that that is part yeah, of yeah. the identity that is Oliver Queen yeah so you know uh, liberal libertarian you know um 
there's a difference between writing that like as the character should be yeah. and then just preaching whatever you know whatever the writer has through it and and there's yeah. a few characters that you know you can't really do that with a character like like batman or with the flash or you know or some of yeah. these characters because they're just not that's just not part of them but some characters you know like green arrow like captain america like superman some of these writers tend to you know project themselves through that and when they do that you're right it, it does get to be a little much i also when they i don't like when they like break him break up him and dinah like there's yeah that's dumb together and it's um you like know, a certain marvel writer with spider-man i was gonna say Come it's on. not just that like you, you, well. there's so few of there's these relationships of in comics that are like good relationships that the that the creative teams let actually last for any yeah. real significant amount of time. And this was one of them. They broke them up and they put them back together and they broke them up and they put them back together. Yeah. One thing I didn't like was when they did New 52 and they just completely changed so much of the character because they wanted to make him like he was on the TV show. Yeah. And, you know, the Arrow TV show, it, it was That's what fair. it was. It had... Yeah. Some, some good seasons i think it had more bad seasons than it had good seasons but it had the, some... the first couple seasons were pretty sweet though but wow. it had so, it had some good stuff but that wasn't the green arrow from the comics no you know, right his... that was batman on tv yeah, exactly. as the that green was, arrow it was yeah. it was batman you know light. batman with, light yeah <laughs> it, was, it was batman with a bow and arrow and you know, libertarian the, Batman, you know, grease paint on his face instead of yeah. a mask, which was dumb. But, you know, it, way down. yeah, that's you know, that that wasn't the Green Arrow character, you know, that that we saw in live action. But since that show ran for so long and was so popular, I, you know, I guess they were well, like, I mean, the whole thing. universe was coined the Arrowverse. Yeah. They're like, oh, we got to we got to make him like that. And thankfully, you know, that did not last yeah. yes i agree with that all right gary what do you got all right so what the only time i really have not liked the character and what they did with him was in the new 52 version where they de-aged him mm -hmm. and they made him a young rich punk again <clears throat> you know he's in seattle and i just i just don't like that character and again it was mirroring what they had done with the arrow verse you know with the green arrow show which i like the green arrow show but they took themselves way too seriously on that show. You know, it, you know, it, it just, how many times they said, can we have the room? You know, they're going to have a serious right. conversation. It just like, you know, Oh, look, we're getting Felicity whining about something yeah, again. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just so, but that, that's a whole nother thing, but I didn't like what they did with the character. He was back into his money and had his tech people and this and that supplying him arrows and all that. Oliver queen, who had was a rich guy, had the fall, and mm, learned yeah. to be the hero of the everyman. That's the guy I like. Now, I will disagree with all three of y'all, I guess. I love it when he's preaching liberal, and I love it. I and mean, maybe that's because this book, The Hard Traveling Heroes, means so much to me. And Denny O'Neill, what he had Green Arrow preaching about against poverty. Now, against Denny O'Neill can do no wrong on any uh, character he writes. Yeah. He is well, the say, exception to the let's rule. Let's preface that okay. with, you know, <laughs> say, that's, that's his character, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Say, that's his character, though. That You can see what other, other writers are trying to push politics through okay. him. Well, you if, know? Then I will agree with you if we are giving Denny O'Neill the exception because these Denny are, reinvented yes. the character and right. then these, Mike these politics, moved the edges. Yes, and Neil Adams has said this: these politics that Den, that Green Arrow was espousing during this run were Denny's. They were Denny's politics, yep. and he yeah. was using that character to make those societal points. And the and the other reason is, yes, he was making big points, and he was speechifying with Green Arrow mm -hmm. and, and putting um, Denny O'Neill's agenda, but. At the time this came out, these are some important tom topics, and yeah. what they did changed comics. We'll see. And this with series changed comics, made them more real, yeah. more relevant, and they were so real, so relevant, so ahead of its time. Like I said before, this book was canceled. Well, and and with that too, Gary, like like with Denny O'Neill, like he is so instrumental in the recrafting of 
Batman. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Green Arrow, who we're yes. talking about today. And the question, Absolutely. Uh, he, Denny O'Neill took Batman when he was at his lowest clownish point with and, Neil Adams with. with well, Neil yeah, Adams. yeah. Uh, and and revitalized the character and showed that uh, he was not a joke. Uh, and Green Arrow, he took a character that was in obscurity uh, yep. on a series that was on its way out the door and uh, turned him, breathed new life into that character. Like like with Denny O'Neill, even though he's using Oliver Queen as his soapbox, I think he is yep. the exception to the rule. because. Because he changed the character in such a way that, like, and this doesn't happen very often when you, when you have a creator reimagining a character and everybody reading is like, yeah, okay, that's that. I get that. That is yeah. this. That is Oliver Queen. And, and it's part of that character's identity. I, I guess, you know, let, let me put an asterisk at, at what I said uh, with, like, modern day creators. Yeah. Because because like when when they push that envelope, like yeah, I, I mean it, it just it feels forced. Make sense. It feels forced it when, does. The, uh, when, okay, when I, new creators do it. But I, when, I buy that. I buy that. So, but when Denny O'Neill yeah. builds a character, he builds. It's it's not like well, I'm writing this for twelve issues, so Oliver Queen's going to tell all the Republicans to eat shit. Yeah. Uh, and and that that's not how Oliver Queen is because one of his best friends. His best friend is the establishment. He's That's right. a space cop. He's yeah, he's right. a conservative. He's yep. he's military, right? And all, yes. Yeah, and Oliver Queen is supposed to be this hardcore libertarian. If he's that hardcore, then then he automatically needs to tell Hal Jordan to beat rocks because they their viewpoints don't align. But that's not who Oliver is because of Denny O'Neill. Right. Well, I, I agree, and I'm glad you're. <laughs> I'm glad we. Yeah. Cleared that up because I was like, damn, that's what that's you know, that's what made that book was yeah. you know, the those right. the, those insights that they had and had 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 Oliver Queen not been you know right. so socially conscious, that book wouldn't have changed comic books. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and, and as controversial as those topics are, that story was not forced. That yep. stuff came out perfectly natural, perfectly organic. And that's you know that's why I gotta say that that's the exception to the rule. And, and, and I will say about those um, and, and Bougie, you are absolutely right. He 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 was he was. I got to meet the man um, once. I'll show you in this book. I've got two scribbles in it. One's Denny O'Neill. One's Neil Adams. So that's you know that's pretty damn amazing. And Denny O'Neill is correct here too. Before O'Neill, Arrow was kind of an empty vessel. He he, he was he was, he was he Robin was, Hood Batman. He was Robin Hood Batman. That's exactly right. And what but what they did and, and like Tim, like you mentioned with Batman, I, I've said this a lot of times, I'm gonna say it again. If you're a fan of the modern day Batman, you owe Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams a tremendous oh, yeah. death gratitude. Hundred percent. They, they brought him out of the silly sixties and uh you know holy turned him back into a horror book. Right. The Dark Knight when they reintroduced the Joker in Detective and Batman two fifty one with the great playing card issue yeah. where the Joker hadn't been in the comics in over two years. Yeah, and they right. reinversed they reintroduced him as a psychopathic murderer. Yeah. So what what they did to that character is great. But anyway, they are great. And um, you know, like I said, <laughs> we're we're on the same page with this now. <laughs> we're on the same page. Like, wow, I'm the only one that feels I, I want to speechify it. I, you know, <laughs> that that and, and here's the other thing. If you haven't read anybody that's listening, if you haven't read the hard traveling heroes these this this great saga that will be mentioned later mm -hmm. must reads these stories about um you know um uh, about religious religious fanaticism yeah. um about eco, e eco ecology eco terrorism about drug abuse um about things like slum lords overpopulation Class, yeah. morality morality yeah these issues that you know it's so dated because none of this is relevant today right <laughs> not <laughs> so when you that, when you read this this stuff is timeless it is still what's plaguing our society mm -hmm. the issues that fall flat in this there are two issues that are kind of superhero issues there's a central and they are the weak links in this run right. they're the weak links but the, all these societal issues um you know um they it is still on point you know 
uh, polluting our planet, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, our and, traveling and, hero shaped comic history. That's absolutely. Right, changed it, man. So yeah. it's just, it's amazing to me. And I just reread it a few years ago because we did a panel on it at Awesome Con about, you know, um, must reads. And I reread everything and I was really happily um, reinforced that these issues stood up so well. Yeah. Still, yep. the drug abuse issue, issues are heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Heartbreaking. Save, save it for the stories. Save, yep. save it for the stories. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on to our next segment of top covers. Damn, why don't you kick us off with top covers? Oh, that's my favorite. Hang on. Let's let's build up the anticipation while I find Wait for it. top covers. Wait for it. Okay, here it is. From Green Arrow books. <laughs> there we go. Oh, nice. I'm glad you used that center one because that was on my tough list. Oh, oh yeah. So I, I almost so used I, that one on the right. So I'll start all the way on the on the right. Um, Green Arrow 55. It's from the Mike Grell run. Oh, I was yeah. telling these guys before it. There's so many great covers where Green Arrow is aiming an arrow either directly at the reader or like very close to the or, or like almost off center. But I said, all right, I'm going to pick one of those because it could easily have three covers of him just pointing arrow straight ahead. And I could easily have three covers that were done by Mike Grell. Cause that one's so there. cool though. So it I is. ended up picking one that was pointing the arrow forward by Mike Grell because it's so awesome that it's like right, you know, shooting it through a hangman's noose. Yeah. It's just such a, you know, awesome iconography. Um, I'll go to the one in the middle that was from the series when uh, Kevin Smith uh, helped relaunch it. And I just love that. I love the, um, you know, how he's posed there, getting ready to shoot yeah. that costume, and then how it's got the green arrow, you know, on the bricks underneath of him, and then the yeah. red guy behind him that makes the green really pop. Yeah. I think that's Wagner that did that one. Yeah, yeah, it's Matt Wagner that did that one. That's such a great classic costume cover. Yeah, Matt Wagner. Uh, Matt Wagner was doing the covers of that series, and there were some really great ones. There was one or two, one or two other ones from um, from that early one that were that were in my. Um, yeah, you'll see one on mine. So yeah, that I loved how the logo is used on the building too. I I, I really love it when uh, those are incorporated into the um, issue. Yeah, yeah, it looks right. so cool. Yeah, great cover. I'm glad you used that. And then uh, even the even the detail, if you see the bricks, you know, on the G R E E A R R O, you know how it's like the normal bricks there, and then on the N and the W, it's the thicker end ones. Like just the detail yeah. on that is so cool. Snoop's got a question. Matt Wagner of Grendel fame. Yes. Yes. Nice. Yeah, cool. he did. In fact, one of the one of the books that's in my spinner rack here behind me is is another um, Matt Wagner cover from that run that that was uh, on my list too that didn't make the cut. And then the one I got all the way in the end is from the current green arrow series. It was an alternate cover for issue one. I wanted to have, yeah. I wanted to have one from the current one. Cause I, I love the series that's going on now. And that's such a cool cover. It's not quite a negative space cover, but pretty it's close, pretty, but it's close pretty, as you can get. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty, yeah. It's as close as you can get without being one, but, well, and DNA was That's doing it. covers for characters like yeah. B covers for for all the titles at that time. Yeah, yeah that and was this awesome. one, an awesome cover. And this is, and and of all of the ones he did, this is, if not the best, is one of the best. And it's just, yeah. it's so cool looking. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, Gary, what do you got? Hang on. All right. There Let's we see. go. Let's see what we got. Um, Oh, that's a nice one. I love that. Yeah. One. All right. Yeah. So since that grabbed your eye, we'll talk about the one in the middle. That's another Matt Wagner. Um, I, I really like it was between that and the one Dan showed on the building. But um, yeah. I, I just love the relationship between him and Hawkman. And even though and, you know, we talk about Green Lantern being a space cop, the uh, the the Katar Hall Thanagarian Hawkman. Yeah, that was a space cop. <laughs> you know, yeah. and yeah. they really had some issues. But they also had a deep underlying respect to uh, in Justice League 111 or 109 when Hawkman left the team, Green Arrow left the room because he didn't want to see anybody see him crying. That a tear was coming down his face because Hawkman left. And that but, goes uh, into that whole aspect of the people he loves. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but I, I just I think that 
that is that is a great in your face. That's uh, awesome. I love uh, that cover. Between the I got, two this, of them. I got this arrow on your beak. And I got this mace ready to pound your skull, buddy. So, <laughs> that, you know, that, that, that is that is pretty cool. Um, on the far right, that was from the Rebirth um, era. And yep. that is a Green Arrow 8. And that was an alternate cover by Neil Adams. And yep. I just, you know, wanted to give Neil Adams, I had to give Neil Adams love on this. And that was a more modern take. And I just thought that was wonderful with him and the Canary. And, yep. you know, a small touch you may not notice is the canary's left hand is um, right by his ear behind his head where she's oh, holding yeah. his head like that. And okay. I just thought that was, you know, one hand's on his chest and the other hand is embracing him and has her hand, uh, hand, fingers through his hair. And I just thought that was such a loving touch yep. and a lovely, I, a yeah. loving embrace. Uh, so That was on my almost made list. That was one yeah. of my, my hardest cuts uh, I had to do. Uh, uh, Real quick, Keith jumps in here. He's got a good point. Keith, good to see you in the chat, buddy. Hey, Keith. Uh, he doing? says, the best superheroes have an efficiency of concept. Flash moves fast. Hulk is strong. Daredevil is blind with heightened senses, a.k.a. looks devilish. And Green Arrow is an archer and sells the bow and arrow. He sells the shit out of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Does. Absolutely. And then the one on the left is by our guy, Mike Grill, who I've been fortunate enough to know for quite a few years out here. Um Mike Grill, that is the Longbow Hunters. Um, that is the Green Arrow Omnibus um, ad edition. So it's really a wraparound cover to it. So that is so that wasn't on the original three issue mini, but that was what he did for the Omnibus. Um, I just like love Sean that. Connery. What'd you say? I said it kind of looks like Sean Connery. A little bit. Yeah. You know, we, we talked about how Denny O'Neill made um, how Denny O'Neill made. Uh, you know, the Green Arrow, the voice of the people, and, you know, you know, had that liberal voice. One thing Mike Grill did was he made Green Arrow, um, like we, I'd said before, a hunter. Mm -hmm. He made him a hunter, which was, you know, a, a, an interesting, you know, aspect to the character where he took, you know, where he took what was established and just... Uh, kind of turned know, him vicious. Yeah, he did. He, he, yeah. he made it. He get, there was a vicious streak that he... Yeah put into him and he and he did he made him a hunter if you if you for those of you that haven't seen um god the movie renner was in with elizabeth olsen and it's slipping it's slipping from my mind right now but he was a hunter in that movie and it was one of the you know just a heartbreaking movie um and i can't who's believe this, it. Who's the actor? jeremy renner and elizabeth olsen it was oh, oh um um, it was done by the guy that does um, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Uh, um, yeah, I did see it. It's such a great movie. And cut and and oh and um, wind, wind um Wind River. Thank wind you. River. Yeah. Wind River. Oh, okay. oh my God! But that's kind of what you know. I get that vibe that Renner had is what I get out of Ollie when he's uh, you know the hunter. Like Came that. out in 2017, ladies. It, and it, it, that movie is heartbreakingly beautiful. So, it is. It's it's really fantastic. And has a lot to say. As, yeah, has a lot to say about things that happen to Native Americans, which uh, which Taylor Sheridan does in all of his work. So and the uh, and and what Jeremy Renner does to yes. the guy at the end is very reminiscent of something that Ollie would Ollie do would do absolutely in that absolutely. same situation. Yep. So it makes me wonder if Tyler Sheridan read. Uh, my girl books. Maybe. <laughs> so anyway, those are my three covers. I love them. And 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 look, I could have picked three girl covers. I could have put three Neil Adams covers. Yeah. You know. So yep. it, it was. This was one of the toughest cover cutdowns I've had to do. And I'm glad that um that that uh, that Dan picked that other cover. And um uh, you know um so we'll see if y'all fellas got some of the other tough cuts there. And evidently, I picked. A cover that was a tough cut for Sal, so I'm glad we got to highlight that. You did all right, Tim. Go ahead next. All I'll right. So Dan and I overlap. We'll start with the DNA cover. Uh, that is one of my absolute favorite modern covers and one of my favorite Green Arrow covers. Uh, I love DNA's work. Uh, David Nakayama. Uh, he yeah. is absolutely fantastic, and that is negative space without being negative space. And that is modern Green Arrow in. I think that's David Nakahomer. 
uh, possibly. <laughs> it's so great too that it's you know that it's I somewhat it. It, it's not straight. It's kind of off kilter. He's kind of yes. angled and pointing yeah. up. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's so good. It showcases him. Yeah. Perfectly. I love it. Uh, we'll go all the way to the one on the right. Uh, that is Green Arrow, the Longbow Hunters, issue number one by Mike Grell. Uh, I actually nice. have all three signed sitting right here next to me. Nice. Uh, that that was one of my favorite meetings of a creator ever, and I will tell that story now. Uh, so when I was married, uh, m my family and I at the time, you know, had had two stepkids plus my two kids, which Codex knows very well. Uh, my stepson at the time, uh, we, it was his birthday and, uh, I had brought my green arrow books cause Mike Grell was going to be there. This was wizard world Nashville and, uh, similar to, uh, I think what Jamie said in his interview, Dan, that you did where he went up to Tinian and the handler was like, Oh, he, you can't talk to him right now. That was the same thing. When, uh, I went up to Grell, his handler was there and Mike Grell was in the middle of doing a commission. And uh, I had my stepson with me at the time and we walked up there <coughs> and I had my three books and the handlers like, oh, no, no, no. He, uh, Mike Grell's busy right now. You guys can't come over here. Uh, why don't you come back in about an hour or so? And Grell didn't even look up and he's like, no, come here, guys. And we walked up there and he stopped. He put the commission down. He looked up. He saw me and my stepson at the time. And uh, he's like, what can I do for you guys? I said, Mr. Grell, I said, you are one of my favorite creators. I said, Longbow Hunters is one of my favorite books. I'm gushing to the guy. And he's sitting there. He's being very polite. And he takes all three books, opens them up, and starts thumbing through them. And he's like, this here, DC didn't want me to do, but I did it anyways. This here, this is the reason why Green Arrow is doing this. This here is this reason and all that stuff. And he sat there with us for a good 20 minutes going over every aspect of these three books. And he sat there and he signed each one. One of my favorite memories of meeting a creator. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, that That's is... Yeah, that that that's cover right is. there is the epitome of Mike Grell. Uh, that that's him at the top of his game. It looks gorgeous. Uh, the one in the center I chose specifically for. Now I know it's a question book, um, but uh, this is when Denny O'Neill was writing the question, and Denny O'Neill's heart really was in the question at this time. Uh, and uh, Green Arrow was a series that I don't think he was working on at the time uh, or he had uh, been away from Green Arrow for a while. But but this here is is during that Mike Grell time period and having Denny O'Neill write a character that he helped re-envision uh, and seeing him on the cover like that. I believe that's Klaus Jansen artwork, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it, it just shows Green Arrow at this point in time in his career as a hero, as a street level hero. Uh, and it just looks so magnificent to me that I had to add it in there. Love it. Almost, look, almost looks James Bondish with the uh, little bit like snowmobile in the background yep. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And guys, I hope we do the question sometime on Comic Character of the Week. Because uh, if you haven't read the Denny O'Neill question series, it is one of the most underrated series in comic history. Okay. Uh, All right. Let's, let's look at What's that? I said, you, I'm sure we'll do the question one day. Yep, I'm sure we will. That is the question. Hmm. <laughs> All right, go ahead and pull mine up. You got it. it it's, such, go. it's, such a, it's such a crime that they didn't make a villain for him called The Answer. <laughs> <laughs> How was how did they not make his <laughs> biggest villain a guy called the answer? Oh my god. Yeah, no. All right, so let's start with the far left one. That's Green Arrow Volume One, number mm -hmm. one. It's uh yep. the penciler was um, Trevor Von Eden and the inker Great was cover. uh uh Dick Goria Gordano? Gordano. Giordano. Giordano. Giordano, thank you. Yep. Giordano. So I, I love that because you look like he's firing off all the all the arrows. You see some of the arrows stuck in the guns. You know, and all the shots are coming at him. Uh, yeah, the question is old school. Good yeah. looking. Yep. That, yep. that was the cover that was a heart. You know, those those two on the left there were ones that were hard cuts for me to make. Um, yep. Dick, Dick Giordano, let's give him some quick love. He was one of the best anchors of his generation. Yeah. All right, another goal yep. of BC. All right. 
Um, anyway, oh. <laughs> he, 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 he was one of the greatest inkers of his generation, and he inked a lot of Neil Adams's great work too. Yeah. Yep. So Definitely. he needs. He, and he was a good penciler in his own right too. But uh, Dick Giordano, a a superstar inker. Yep. So I really like the uh, the logo in this because you can see the arrow as part there of the A going underneath the R's into the target of the O. Yep. I love that. And, yeah, and, I love the logo too. Yeah. Right, that's awesome. And of course, the middle one, green and green arrow. This is just a fantastic cover uh, all classic. around. Classic. Uh, it's an iconic cover. Th know? That's got to be a top ten iconic cover. If you were going yes. to build ten iconic covers, I would almost say top one. five. I would put that one in the top five. You know what? It might be. You might be you absolutely know? right on that, Sal. That might be a top five iconic cover. Never. The only again. reason it the only reason it wasn't on my list is because. I knew I checked with Sal and he said he was putting it on his. So I was like, all right, well, yeah. I'm going to make room for another one. And, and, and the yeah. only reason it wasn't on mine is because I used it for the green, the Hal Jordan show. I, so I know what I did too. I did too, yeah. but I just, I could not, I could not cut yeah. this one. I couldn't. Of course, this, this is Jack Adler, Neil Adams, and it's just amazing. Yeah. So we're not going to dwell on that nope. too long. The, the last one I got there, a green arrow and uh, 80th like anniversary that. number one. This is the, um, uh, the Dan Mora did the uh, cover art for this one, but what I really like about this is not only the perspective and the yeah. arrows are shooting almost like a shooting past your ear, but look at the hat. The hat's already flying Ooh. off of him yeah. as he's <laughs> as he's released the arrow. You know, that's it's, that it's, cocky cool right there. Another yeah, goal, exactly. Another goal. Another goal. Hey, what's the Another score? goal, three nothing. Um, nice. And let me and Sal that. Cover, I'm so happy you chose that because I don't know. Let me ask you this. Did anybody choose that book for a recommended reading? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. I did not. Yeah. No. I almost wanted to, but there's so many other great stories. But for, for you folks that are listening, that Green Arrow 80th anniversary book is spectacular. That was my favorite book that came out that year. It was a couple of years ago. That was my yeah. favorite comic in the whole damn year. It was like an 80 page book. Had about eight pager, or his hundred pager had it's about eight, eight, eight or more Green Arrow stories. Four of them were amazing, including the first time Mike Grill had written and drawn a Green Arrow story in years, which was amazing. Uh. There was um, the the last the last story was very poignant. It was a Denny O'Neill tribute written by his son, and instead of um, instead in the thought balloons or the word balloons. There were no um, words, but there were pictures oh, in, in the blues. Man. It was amazingly touching, dealing with Denny O'Neill's life and you know his passing and how well yeah. loved he was. It was very touching, and there was a super. And there was, I believe, there's a a Jeff John story in there that was a lot of fun. And then there was a great story, and I wish I could remember who wrote it right now. Where um, Black Canary sent Green Arrow to Ted Grant's gym. To get some um, boxing lessons, mm -hmm. and it was early in the relationship uh, with Canary and uh, Ollie, and Ollie didn't know that Ted Grant was Wildcat, <laughs> and yeah. so so here's this old guy giving him lessons, and walking out of the gym when Ollie walks in was Batman, and Batman, <laughs> and, and he's like, "What the hell's Batman doing here?" And Batman walks by and goes, uh, says snidely to him, "How's the arrow car?" <laughs> <laughs> so it was nice. just great and of course he gets in the ring he gets pummeled by the old man and uh at one point uh uh dinah walks in and says how's he doing how's he doing ted and uh you know he real that's when ollie realizes it's wildcat and uh he says well he says he's got a really great strong bow arm that right arm is really great and strong but uh you know he he, he leads with his face but uh, I want you to know that I, 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 he goes, I didn't hit him in the face for you because I know that's kind of pretty. So she thanked him oh for not hitting him in the face. But it was just great. He's on the, you know, he's on the canvas. Ted has beat his ass. He leads was, with his face. Leads with his face. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But that's it was, just, but I, I just saying that that was such a wonderful, unexpected treasure. You know, you knew it would be fun, and all these eight, all these big anniversary issues are. Yeah. But that was a gem with four stellar, stellar stories. So I highly recommend anybody that can find it. And there's a lot of great different covers for that. I probably have eight different covers for that same nice. book. But nice. so the Tom Taylor wrote it. Yeah. It's, it's so sorry, it's I'm, also, it's a, it's, I'm, I'm passionate about that wonderful book. The one with Tom Taylor, or 
with Wildcat. It's written by Tom Taylor and pencil okay. by Nicola Scott. Uh, Keith, uh, before we end the cover section, Sal, he says, I'm sure the Kevin Smith run was already mentioned tonight. It has not, but it might get later. I don't know. Uh, in retrospect, it's not a great run aside from some scenes, but I love any plot where someone has to pull themselves from heaven, excuse me, slash paradise. Absolutely. I Very do too. true. Very true. All right. So this wraps up top covers. And this brings us to our sponsor Ooh. of the night. Does anybody who know who it? our sponsor is? Who's our I'm sponsor? wondering who. I, you know, Wild the life of me, I can't. I have no idea who the sponsor might be. All right, I know. Sponsors <laughs> Comic Logic. I am a proud co-owner, one of the proud owners of Comic Logic. Um, we are Loudoun County, Virginia's only comic book store. So if you are in the Northern Virginia area, please come see us. Snoop was up Wednesday. It came to us, so please come, come, came to see us. So um, please come to see us in Northern Virginia area. We'd love to see you. We have um, some big events I'd like to talk to you about that are coming up on um, April twentieth. We have our anniversary. We have our ninth anniversary. So come in. We'll probably have a sale or two going on. We may have some refreshments for folks. We just want to say thank you to all our great customers who have been supporting us for all these uh, these nine years. Um, our really big event coming up is May uh, is on Free Comic Book Day, which is mm -hmm. May the fourth. And May the fourth be with you and Free Comic Book Day at the same time. Ooh, that sounds like we need a Star Wars guest, and <laughs> surely we do. We and we have one. We have Mr. Brendan Wayne, who is in the Mandalorian. He plays the. He is the Mandalorian when the helmet is on. That's Mr. Wayne doing the acting. Brendan Wayne, for me, is a big deal because he is John Wayne's grandson. So he is Hollywood royalty. I am about, all about the Duke. That is my guy. And I will actually have him here at the Library of Comics, Comics taking a tour. And to have John Wayne's grandson in my house is going to be a major major deal. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So come see us, come see Mr. Wayne, come get your free com your free comic books on free comic book day. We love, love, love to see you. Our last big event I want to tell you about is on Sunday, May 19th. Sunday, May 19th is our spring lot con lot con. We do twice a year. We do a fall and a spring. And what we do is we turn our parking lot into a mini comic con. There'll be mm -hmm. comic dealers. There'll be old, you know, there'll be silver and gold age books. There'll be modern books. There'll be bronze. So you'll have different, different um, choices. There'll be um, like uh, uh, Sapphire Glade, I believe, will be there, and there'll be um, variant covers that he likes to specialize in, things like that. So please come see it. We'll have, there'll be vendors with toys. There'll be uh, local artists and local authors come and sell their wares. At, um, um, so you can, you can check them out. Mm -hmm. And just a wonderful, wonderful uh, atmosphere. Dan and Sal came with uh, their families uh, last fall and had a really good time. So we would love to see you. So if you come to the Fall Lot Con, not only will you get to see the Comic Logic folks, but you may actually run into Codex folks too. You definitely run into one with me, but maybe we get Dan and Sal down there for that. And you'll run into Comic Logic and Codex all in one place together, crossing streams. <laughs> Be there. Don't cross the streams. <laughs> You said the crossing the streets will be bad. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you say it would be bad. Be bad. But and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll danger us and our, no. and our client before yep. she became a dog. Well, there you go. That's right. You got uh, one more thing, Sal? One more thing? Oh, yes. The second sponsor of the night. Take it away, Tim. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, you love covers. We all do. Uh, and I want to show you a cover that you guys can win. So it's real simple. Uh, I want to win. Hey, Sal, you work for us, so you you're can't automatically win. out. We're we're already. <laughs> you get to do with, Sal, you get to do with this show with us twice a week. You're already a winner. There you oh, go. Well, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, series Stray Dogs. Uh, this is the sequel, not the sequel, but the second series by that creative team. This is called Feral, and if you see this cover, it's about cats. And this is an homage to one of the greatest. Uh, B horror movies in the 80s, uh, Fright Night. Take mm -hmm. a look at that. Yeah. They're just absolutely beautiful. You can win this, and it is so easy for you to do. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. All you got to do is make sure you're subscribed to the Codex Station. So if you're watching right now, or even if it's recorded, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Super simple, super easy. I'll give you five seconds to do that. Okay, that's enough. It was five seconds somewhere. It's not that hard. 
All you got to do is click the button. Second thing you got to do is type in hashtag giveaway. If you're on live with us right now and you have not uh, entered in to get this yet, go ahead and do that now through the rest of the episode. Hashtag giveaway to get entered in to win Feral number one, the Nirvana Comics exclusive cover. And if you're watching this uh, pre-recorded, Type in hashtag giveaway in the comments. It's that simple. It's that easy. And we will be giving this away at the end of the month. Snoop, you're already entered. I've got your name down right there. So (laughs) you can't enter twice. Uh, But uh, yeah, other people, Bougie, I don't believe I have your name on here yet. So why don't you go ahead and type in hashtag giveaway. There it is. Uh, And once again, if you're watching this pre-recorded hashtag giveaway in the comments, will get you entered in to win Feral number one. It'll be given away at the end of the month. Good right. deal. Awesome stuff. That's a fun yeah. looking book. I, I love oh, the yeah. homage covers. It is. It's awesome. I love it. All right, let's get on to our next segment, ladies and gentlemen. This is the one that Gary's been waiting for all night. Hold so you fast. can kick, off, kick us off first on this one, Gary. Give us your essential I got Bougie and Eternal marked in for the giveaway. Now we're doing nice. Gary's readings, right? Yep. Correct. Okay. Throw those up there. Palm readings? He wants Harry, his palm read. Harry palm yep. readings? Yep. We're doing palm read. You, you, uh, <laughs> what was the old joke? You'd say, uh, you want your palm read? And somebody hand you the hand, you squeeze it as hard as you can. I go, look, oh. it's red. <laughs> I thought you were going to do a Bugs Bunny where you paint, paint it red. Yeah, oh no, no. You'd squeeze the hell out of it and go, well, there it is. It's red. I see a swimming pool in your future and then spit in her hand. Oh, no. yeah, <laughs> I remember that, too. Uh, um, all right. Green Lantern, the, the, the I mean, um, up top, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, the hard traveling heroes. I, again, this book changed comics. It changed comics. I know uh, Snoop uh, was chiming in on that too he's an old school guy like me he knows mm-hmm. this book changed comics um and made them much you know made them adult fair so much so that the book was canceled because the world was not quite ready for it but it is an amazing tome and i just want to read you just a little bit from when um when green arrow finds out you know it's an iconic cover everybody's seen where speedy's a junkie mm-hmm. and green arrow finds out and this is what this is what he does. First thing he does is he hits Speedy. He hits him. And he said, you're a lousy junkie. You know better than the rest of the sniveling punks. And uh, Speedy says, if that's the way you see it, Arrow, go ahead and hit me. Maybe that'll make you feel better. And uh, Arrow says, maybe you're right. And uh, Speedy says, you want to do it again? Do you have to prove to yourself that you're stronger than us weaklings? A big man like you doesn't need drugs, does he? You get high on your own self-righteousness. And Green Arrow turns away from him. It says, shut up. I'm not interested in excuses. I'm not interested in you. Not anymore. Just get out. And then Green Arrow thinks to himself, was it me? Did I somehow fail that kid? I haven't paid much attention to him lately, but he shouldn't need attention. At his age? No, I'm innocent of blame. I always thought him to be strong, independent, to hang tough. Wow. How about that for a response, right? How about that for response? And tell me this, how real is that, fellas? How real, right? Oh, yeah. Somebody, you know, a situation where there's a kid that's been ignored, that's needed his father figure, and he's not around. And then when he's, when something like that happens, the first thing the father figure does is he hits him, yeah. and, he's, and, he, and he rationalizes to himself that it's not my fault. I raised him better than that. He justified it. He justified it. Couldn't yeah. be me. And then he and Hal go off to find the dealers that's dealing them smack and one of Speedy's friends dies and they find the dealer. And that's how they're going to, that's how they're going to resolve things is by going back and getting the guy that's selling them the crap. So I, you know, so not, not to be there for him. And actually it's ends up being Dinah who's there for him as he goes through his withdrawals and all that while Ollie and Hal are, um, you know, searching, searching for the dealers. And then there's a scene where, where he's he's clean and Roy forgives him, but he gives him some shit about it. You know, he he talks shit. So <laughs> that's just a small segment, fellas. And I appreciate you letting me talk about that. Oh, yeah. But I just want it. That's the realness 
of this series. That is raw, man. That is raw and that is real. And that is everyday life. Everyday life. And yes. Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams, what they put on that those pages were magic. So oh, yeah. that's my soapbox. Thank you for letting me um letting me get on it. Um number two is a, a book that is the kind of, that same character, but again more of a hunter because that's what he was by Mike Grill, written and drawn. I think Julia uh LaRockman or um LaRockman who did did the um Pam never late, always on time. Pam, Pam, you. Have, um, in the Longbow Hunters, Ollie, <coughs> you know, Ollie, Dinah's been captured, and Ollie yeah. is going after the guys that did it. And there's a lot of questionable moral decisions that Ollie makes for, you know, revenge, for, mm -hmm. um, you know, for anger. And uh, he has to deal with the long term repercussions. Also, repercussions repercussions about his infidelity as much as he loves dinah yeah he, he he loves the ladies and that's again i love this character because he's so flawed and so i many think ways. in longbow hunters that was that was like a deep part of the plot too was yes. his fidelity in that whole yes. three issue series absolutely yep. first appearance yep. of uh, was it shada yeah yeah yep. yep. absolutely and Getting on to that kind of that same, and I'll have to show you. Yeah, you know, I have to show when when at at the end of the recommended readings, I'll have to ask. Mm -hmm. I'll let you. I'll I'll ask you to put me on the large box so I can show you the scribblings that I have on these. Yeah, books. it's kind of neat. But the Archer's Quest. So this immediately follows the Kevin Smith run in Green Arrow. So um, it the story was told by Brad Meltzer. And it's Phil Hester Art, Andy Parks, and it was, um, let's see, I'm going to get you the numbers in case anybody's just wanting to buy the single issues. It's Green Arrow 16 to 21. And this so right is right after Quiver. Right right after Quiver. Wow. And it um, leads into Green Lantern Rebirth. Yes, it did. And yep. Ollie, you know, Ollie, the big tragedy with Connor, you know, with his son that he didn't know he had was that he was never there for him when he grew up. And as you go through the archer's quest, you come to question what might be known about Ollie and that past mm -hmm. relationship. And it's kind of heartbreaking. And again, delves into some character flaws of Oliver Queen, which makes him all the more human. Here's uh, something for you, Gary, that goes back to the hard traveling heroes. Uh, Richard has a question. Stay with Roy or beat up the dealers if you were Green Arrow? If it was me, I mean, especially with Green Lantern there, I'd stay with Roy and send Green Lantern to beat him up. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I kind of I kind of I, I kinda agree with that. And actually what happened to them was they got, um, I think they got doused with some of the drugs i think why they were doing that and they actually themselves um inhaled or um you know they suffered the effects of uh some of the drugs because of you know their actions they were brash and they were um reckless and they ended up uh you know getting themselves in uh you know more yeah. trouble because they were so angry but i like what dan said i like that you stay with roy and you let yeah. um you let hal take care of it well, that is definitely the right yeah. answer. But if I were Green Arrow, I I think that uh, I would have been brash or rash, and uh, gone after the dealers. And, and you know what? Or you, send, or you send Lantern after him and say, "You find them. You let me know when they're. I'm staying here with him. You let me know when they're found. We gotta we gotta help him now." We can, you know, they'll still check them down later. Well, uh, Richard says he'd send Wildcat after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wildcat they don't want that. Tomorrow. They don't want that. Nope. No, they don't want that at all. Um, you know, it, it depends on when you ask me that. If you ask me now, yeah, I think I stay with my kid. If you asked me 15 years ago, I go beat the hell out of whoever uh, supplied my kid. Well, me now as a as a parent with teenagers, uh, I I think 
like like you just said, Gary, 15 years ago, that's me now. Yeah, uh, I'd go beat the hell out of him. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm actually with Dan on this one. I would uh, send a GL after him and say, just find them. Let us, let me know where they're at. And yeah. as soon as I can leave uh, Speedy, yeah. then I'm there. And then I'm there beating the crap out of them. And, and guys, I don't know. Also, in the hard traveling heroes, when Speedy's friend overdoses, that is a multi-page sequence yeah. that mm -hmm. is just amazingly graphic. You know how he hits the high and then it just stops his heart and he dies. It is quite the quite the sequence and one not seen in comics. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, just amazing. All right, Tim. Uh, I'm sorry. I, is that all your stories then? Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. And like I said, all those are really good. And I can't talk too much about the Archer's Quest because it gives too much away. But it is, you know, there, there's some heartbreaking moments in that. Right. All right, Tim, why don't you go next? Okay. <laughs> I, I should be sending in some henchmen. No, I'm not sending in henchmen. <laughs> I'm sending in my cousin. My cousin Vinny. Okay. I'm going to give him an <laughs> offer Vinny? they can't hey, refuse. Hey, a, a man named Sal definitely has henchmen named Vinny. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Sal sending his oh, to Vinny to find the Utes. Yeah. Yeah. Find, the Utes. <laughs> find the Utes that did this. Yeah, find oh, the Utes that did this. God. All right. Uh, <laughs> Let's see here. My recommended reading. Uh, we'll get longbow hunters out of the way. I am going to tell you nothing about that. And this is why uh, throughout the episode, we we talk about different aspects or different points that take place during that story. That's all you need to know. Uh, you, you need to go get it and you need to read it. That is one of the most influential Green Arrow <laughs> stories you will ever read. Hang Agreed. on. People's, yep. People are saying stuff in the chat. What Snoop says he's sending Tony and another Tony after him. Tony, Tony, go get him. Moose and Rocco. Moose and Rocco. <laughs> the judge find his checkbook. Tony and the other Tony. That is great. But yeah, oh, the Tony. long. Who's that with you? That's other Tony. That's the other Tony. Oh, the other oh. Tony. <laughs> but, but yeah, Longbow Hunters, guys, if you have not read it, for anybody that's within the sound of my voice, go pick it up read it that this is one of the greatest comic stories you'll ever read uh up top green arrow volume seven that's the current series i yeah, highly recommend reading that yes. i think it's what at issue nine right now so you've yep. got plenty of time and it's right in the middle of the second storyline so so you're not missing so too good. much yeah. but it was supposed to be just a mini series and it did yeah. so well with sales and Williamson did an amazing job with writing this, uh, that, uh, yeah, you, you gotta read it. It's so good. And Tim, you got me, uh, you got me hooked on that one. You got me the sub to it. Did it's, I? That's great. And just came out like two weeks ago. Okay. It's, so, and it's yeah. part of a, you know, they're doing something not to give away too much in it, but they're doing the first storyline. And the second one is something that's going to tie into, the big major storyline yeah. that DC is getting ready to, you know, to have mm -hmm. going on with Amanda Waller in their books. So, oh yeah. So, you know, what you're, what you were reading, seeing in green arrow now is just leading up to what's going to be, you know, a major thing in, in green arrow and in um, suicide squad and yeah. in Titans. We'll see in the great thing with volume seven, of Green Arrow, the current series, is you get the entire Arrow family in there. You you get Arsenal, yeah. you get yeah. uh Black Canary, you you get uh his son, uh the other Green Arrow. <laughs> you get Green Arrow himself plus uh Arsenal's kid. Uh, Green Arrow. Mia, they brought Mia back. Yeah, yeah they did. They brought Arrowette. Mia back. Yeah. I mean, you know, they there, brought Arrowette back. There's so much in here, and it, it's not overwhelming. It's just great. Like, every week on uh, Comics Unleashed, we talk about how good this series is. And I uh, like that uh, the, while the current artist is fantastic, yeah. when they have fill-in artists, it, it's Phil Hester. They're bringing back a classic yeah. artist to be the fill-in artist, and it's it's awesome. And one of my favorite parts about uh, the, the new series is when he uh, went through the gauntlet of all the different iterations of himself yeah like the different costumes and stuff like that and they yeah. even had the uh the color dots 
Yeah. I, I yeah. thought that was so cool. But 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 yeah, either way, uh Green Arrow Volume 7, go check it out if you're not reading it. Get into it. Longbow Hunters must read. Uh yeah. And then down below, I wanted to do something a little bit off of uh the beaten path. Uh Bougie says Phil Hester, dig that. Absolutely. Uh so Batman, Green Arrow, and the question. This is a three-part series. Uh, it, all done in the first issue annuals of their respective series. So Detective Comics, first annual, uh, Green Arrow's first annual, and Questions, first annual. The story is called Fables. And I love this story. Like, I was knee-deep reading the Question series when I got to annual number one, and I was like, this is part three. What are the other two parts? Oh, Green Arrow and Detective Comics. So I got those. Uh, and it's Denny O'Neill writing three of his, the greatest characters he's ever written. Uh, and it's kind of an offbeat story, right, of this uh, Japanese man that is trying to get back to his homeland of Japan to be buried there. But uh, other things are getting in the way. Gary, I think you have. Let me see. Is that what I think it is? Yep. Yeah, that is. Oh, I can't wait for people to see that. But um <laughs> Yeah, so so he gives parables to Batman, Green Arrow, and Question, and who better than than the three most literal literary minded characters in DC? Uh, it starts off slow. Uh, the the highlight issue is obviously uh, not the Green Arrow issue, but the Question issue. But all three issues uh, tell a singular story that fit this overall. Uh, fable basically and they all connect together and they all come together at the end and it's it's just amazing it's an offbeat story that you really should read all right cool I, it was good it was a good story i agree i love it it's it's one of those stories that has been forgotten about i don't think it's ever been collected uh i, I don't you, you know there was a big question omnibus i wonder if it was in there i don't know because this was a denny denny o'neill story yeah right? yep. oh yeah <laughs> yeah but it's it was it was fun it's yeah it's a it's a it's nice good. solid story this is like the b-side on records there you go agreed yeah dan did you already give your stories i think you did right we no. started with you right no no we no. started with gary no started with me okay then dan why don't you go next all right uh i'll start off i we already talked about longbow hunters enough i think uh you know go out and read it it's there's two there's two series, you know, that have been the most character defining for Green Arrow. The first one was Hard Traveling Heroes, which I also was also for Green Green Lantern, and I had it on my Green Lantern list. The only reason I didn't put it on this list is because I knew that Gary was. Mm -hmm. And Longbow Hunters. Those are the two most uh, character defining stories for Green Arrow. So absolutely, you have to read both of them. Yep, I agree. Um, Longbow Hunters is when Mike Grell came in really and decided I'm going to ground this character like it's mm -hmm. not going to be superhero. -y. We're getting rid of the trick arrows. He's using real arrows. You know, he's going to shoot people. They're going to get hurt. You know, he's going to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he he changed the costume. He didn't wear a mask anymore. And, f and then this led into the ongoing book, which is also really good, you know, and you know, he was telling us again when we interviewed him, which go watch the interview. It, it's awesome. Well, yeah. Pam reinforces that. She says, sorry if this is a repeat uh, that we've talked about, but huge Mike Grell fan. And you guys did a great interview with him. Well, thank you, Pam. Yeah. We loved and, it. Yes, yes, they did. Awesome. And, um, and Bougie also says here real quick, Danny says, Batman Arrow and the question should have been a team book. I agree. We would kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 that, yeah. The, the, the two of them would annoy the shit out of Batman. Oh, you know it. But uh, but with, you know, Longbow Hunters was the start of you know Mike Grell's long tenure on the character, mm -hmm. where he said you know he he didn't wear a mask in the entirety of Mike Grell's um, run. Like he never referred to him as Green Arrow. Black Canary did not use her sonic cry, even though she was using it in other books. She didn't use it in that. Anytime Hal Jordan or any of these superhero friends guest starred in his book, they were all in street clothes. They all used their own names. Every year that every everybody, 
Yeah. <laughs> Every 12 issues of the series, which was a year in our time, Grell wrote it as a year in Green Arrow. So he yeah. was every year he he had it where he got older and older and you know it was just fantastic and long yeah. behind where it kicked it off. Um I just put Green Arrow volume three one through twenty three because I couldn't decide between the two runs. It starts off it's one through um um now is volume three the the the, the Smith run yeah, that's why okay. it actually should be issues one through twenty-one on here. So it's one through fifteen. That's the Kevin Smith run. So he has the big long storyline that brought that's Green Quiver. Arrow. Yeah, that brought yeah. Um, Quiver. Yeah, where it brought Green Arrow back from the dead, and you know it, it got into showing how you know because it had been teased in another book where you know where um, right before Hal Jordan sacrificed himself mm -hmm. and. Um, was it in final night that that he brought, oh yeah that he brought green arrow back and then it was the tease was just kind of left there for a while so um so this showed you know what happened how he brought him back and and all that and then it had a few issues that wasn't a major storyline but it was you know it was some of the Kevin Smith Phil Hester stuff but it was some um some fun issues it introduced a new character Anamanapia and <laughs> which was a uh, which, it, was, it was a cool character you it was know? a cool character insane way i mean insane name to have to write but yeah yeah but the way like he only spoke you know it sounds yeah it, well if you don't know onomatopoeia is I the word not. for a sound that is spelled like it sounds so it's boom smash you know those type of things and the character that's the only way he speaks is by saying that stuff so wow. he'll so he'll like punch somebody and then go crack as he hears a jaw crack. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then the and then the one through and then the, or the issue sixteen through twenty one. Uh, what is it? Sixteen. 17? Archer's quest. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the um, the archer's quest, the one that Gary talked about, where um, where Green Arrow and um, was it Roy, where they go yep. on the, this kind of. This road trip and it's collecting, you know, now that Green Arrow's back from the dead, it's going and, you know, collecting these different artifacts from his past. One of them, which was the Green Arrow ring that that led into Green or the Green Lantern ring that led into Green Lantern rebirth. And, you know, there's a funny scene with him in a boxing glove arrow. You know, there's mm -hmm. him like, you know, the stuff going into the to the arrow cave and um, the quiver. Yeah, so it's, a, you know, it was just, I, I couldn't decide between, you know, I couldn't decide between putting both of them on there. So I was like, they're in the same series. I'll just say read the first 21 issues of it because it's fantastic. It yeah. is, absolutely. And none yeah. of them, they're not expensive issues to get. They're no. all, you know, they're all like I, cover price. I think the only one that might fetch uh, more than a couple dollars is number one. And that's the start I mean, of Quiver. Yeah, none of them are, you know, if you, yeah. none of them you should be, should be more than $10, if yeah. even $10. Yeah, maybe if it's like slabbed at a 9.9, .9, but, you know, right. I don't know about that. And then the other one I put on there is Year One. It was a mini miniseries. Um, uh, it's just a good retelling of his origin. It added some, you know, it expanded on it some where, I don't want to say too much to give too much away because, like I said in the intro, his his basic origin is you know rich guy stranded mm -hmm. on desert island, has to teach himself archery so he can survive. Gets off the island, becomes the Green Arrow. You know that's all of his origins are in some way that this just expands on the story, adds some adds some more stuff to it while taking bits of you know of stuff that like Mike Grell had had about his origin and other writers and puts it all in there so it's just a, a really cool way to, to be a good introduction to them thanks all right let's yeah. go ahead and bring mine up you're going to see pretty much the same thing so i got no need to dwell on topics too much look at that yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh i'll, I'll, I'll give you like a 10 seconds of each one hard traveling heroes this is a story that's epic and it changed comics as we know it. Uh, it, it, it 
really define, exactly that's wonderful define the personalities of green arrow and green lantern um to a t mm. longbow hunters I, I you know this is it you know a, a epic series as well or you know he drops the trick arrows it goes right to the regular arrows a whole nine yards with that everything that dance and gary and tim have said about this is Amazing. Well, I mean, there's a reason why we overlap yep. on recommended yep. readings a oh, lot. Oh, yes. Because they're Absolutely. so good. And, uh, of course, year one, like Dan said, perfect retelling of the story. It's by Andy Diggle and the artist by Jacques. So this is definitely something you, you want to check out. If you really want to see the, the beginnings of Green Arrow, I would probably check this one out first. There you go. So there you go. And all these the hard traveling heroes books, that's going to run you some money. But yeah. all the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. Year one, you know, the stuff that's and that's been collected, and most of these have been collected. But if you were to get the original issues of Longbow Hunters, they're not pricey. Year no. one, it's cover price stuff. All the uh, you know, the, the stuff Tim was had on his list, the Batman question, oh, all, all the question stuff you can get for yeah. a buck. Yeah, they're all yeah. they're all cheap ones too. Like outside of hard traveling here, these are all books that are very, very yeah. affordable. Uh, That's wait, what Tim oh, was talking about. Gary, oh, yes. Oh, my God. I want That's that poster, poster so bad. Oh, better lock it up before Tim visits. Well, Tim, Tim, I'll let you caress it. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I will give it loving. Touching. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. Oh, guess so, um, just if, if anybody likes. A, oh, there you go. Tim signature. Yep. Yeah. Well, since you have me. Uh, Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'll, show my, I'll show mine real quick. And Dan's got some artwork there. So, all right. hold on. You no, know, yep, got me. So let's there just go. go. You know, the last, way. Time, the last time Tim said that he had to spend the weekend in county lockup. That no, is shit. true. Signatures by Mike. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Absolutely love it. And then issue number three, right there. Very cool. Done. All right, Chad, Gary, what do you got? Oh, collected edition. Um, we've got Mike this. Grill. Nice. Yeah. Mike Grill down there. That's the image I chose. Um, Archer's Quest. I got Brad Meltzer and I got a Hester. Oh, that's cool. So a Hester Green Arrow little scribble that's for me. great. Isn't that that's great? That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. So, um, Archer's Quest, and then the big the big deal on this uh, great volume here, um, and and you know the original books of for the hard traveling heroes, yes, they are expensive, but um, they've been collected many times. Um, yeah. This is this is a huge deal to me because it's signed by Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. Oh man, that's amazing! So, that is amazing. I, yeah. I also have a great Batman yeah. volume. That is signed. I'm sorry. Let me get closer. I also have a great Batman volume that is signed by both of them. So of their work. Wow. So, you know, the, these are treasure parts of my collection, you know, to have. Oh, those, I would imagine. So those two great creators, you know, they have their signatures on what is, again, this is one of the most important comics ever series ever published. Wow. So, you know, big deal. So thanks for the indulgement. Yep. No problem. No problem. Here we go. All right. So let's jump to our and final I segment. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Let's see it. Hang on, Dan. <laughs> and that, that is done by our artist in residence. Yes. Yeah. Dan There's Kelly blank, art. Blank sketch cover for the current series, which I was going to gift this to Tim for Christmas, <laughs> but I was not happy, which is the reason I have him in the Mike Grell costume because Tim said that was his favorite one. Yeah. But I wasn't happy with how the belt buckle turned out, so I did Tim the Moon Knight one instead. Well, that's cool because I love the Moon Knight artwork. Yep. So he loved I, he loved how you mooned him. I did yep. very he much so. I, I love it so moons. much. You moon me every day. Yeah. There you um, go. <laughs> we we talked a bunch about Mike Grill. I want to give a shout out that Mike Grill also teamed up with Denny O'Neill when they revived Green Lantern and Green Arrow at yeah. issue 90 to, uh, I can't remember how far it went, but they called that run the Space Traveling Heroes. And yes. that was a fun <laughs> run with Denny O'Neill and Mike Grill doing it. And then a shout out to Mike Grill writing on that 
volume two of Green Lantern, I believe it was issue 27 and 28, he had a Warlord crossover, a two-issue Warlord crossover. Oh, wow. yep. And they both look alike. Travis has got this silver goatee and silver hair, and Warlord is a lot bigger than Travis. Yeah, that's that Space Traveling Heroes. That's cover. great. Yep. Those are in that. And it was you like that. Oh, what is he, what's he mentioning? <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> that's my Uncle Gary impersonation there. Oh, <laughs> what, you mean that? You mean that? Yeah. The, so, the fast do, I need to get, do I need to get a slab off the wall? Do I need wow. to pull a slab? <laughs> well, you, you've got the 76 slab, don't you? I do. I do. Pretty good. Yes, I do. I only had two right, copies ladies. of that one. What's that? What's that? I only had two copies of 76. Oh, you only have two. <laughs> I know. <Whatever. laughs> I don't have any. Let's get on to the final segment of the night, and that is our best author and artist for green arrow and tim why don't you kick us off on this one who do you got yeah so so i know one of you guys is going to choose denny o'neill or mike grell so i will not choose either either of them Ooh, that's a curveball uh they they are classics there it is right there look at that guys yeah there it is fantastic. beautiful that is only awesome. a 5.0 uh, yeah Wes would be Wes so is, disappointed. Wes is, disappoint <laughs> Wes is shaking yeah, Wes, his head in disappointment right now. Wes always shakes his head in disappointment on me. Oh my oh, does Wes have that book? I no. don't think so. No, Wes ain't no. shaking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he's shaking something. But he's not shaking that. <laughs> he's shaking uh, wow, Give it to me! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, one of you guys is going to choose Denny O'Neill or Mike Grell. So I, I will leave that to you guys. I, on the uh, other hand, am going to take a, a modern approach. Uh, I would love to see Pam says beautiful books, Al. Thank you, Pam. Appreciate you it. I'm going to take a modern approach and I'm going to go with uh, Jed McKay uh, to do the writing for Green Arrow. Okay. I, I, with his work on Moon Knight, uh, I think that he could bring that same type of fun uh, to a character like Green Arrow and treat the character with respect. Uh, and utilize him the way that he would need to be and, and make for very entertaining stories. As far as the artwork goes, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot an arrow towards, uh, Greg Pulo. Uh, I would love to see him do a, a full, a, a full 20 plus issues with Jed McKay on, on green arrow. I think that would look fantastic. Yep. All right. Very cool. All right, Dan, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, I'll for writer, I'll have to go with a tie between Mike Grell and Denny O'Neill. I mean, they're the they're the two writers that have most influenced the you know what this character is or who this character is. So thank you, Bougie. Um, yeah, I, I'll have to go with both of them for artist. I would go with with Grell, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little curveball because I mean, Grell is an obvious choice. So I'm going to say, outside of, of him, I'm going to say, I don't even know if I'm going to pronounce the name right, Sean Zaxi. It's the artist on the current series. I love. Oh, yeah. I love how he draws him that, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's kinetic, it's fun, it's serious and dark when it needs to be, it's fun when it needs to be, the action's good, you know, each character looks like their own character. Um, yeah. So he's got a very distinct yeah. style and I, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really dig it. So Grell, and then for the modern one, I would pick him. Nice. All right. All right, Carrie, who do you have? All right. This, this was just brutal and this was agonizing because. Yeah. There are... So I, I let like the hard choices to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, well yeah. he, he, here's the thing on this thing. I, and I get where Dan's coming from tying them. But I, I, I usually try not to have the ties. So uh, for historical significance, mm -hmm. I have to say Denny O'Neill. Because, again, this isn't just a great version of Green Arrow. This is one of the greatest comic books ever produced, this run. So it, it is a all-time classic comic book run. So for that, the historical factor, I have to give him such a slight nod over um, over Mike Grill. And also, he redefined who this character is. He, he redefined it. He set 
the standard, the template on who this character was that Grill expanded on and again made him a hunter. So just not not far in his shadow. I mean, you know, not far behind stand he's not standing very far behind Mike, you know, behind Denny O'Neill, but I gotta give it to Denny O'Neill. Artist, the same deal. And the same man ends up just barely behind, and that's Mike Grill, barely, barely, barely behind Neil Adams. And that is because I just believe Neil Adams also set the standard. There you go, Snoop. Set the standard because, it, and it was um, in Raven the Bold 85 where yeah. he redesigned this character and gave him the look that we're more used to seeing. Grill took it to another level, have it the hood, had it less of a superhero costume, and was great and was great for urban warfare. And I mean, it pains me to not put Mike Grill in the top slot on both of those as much as I love him. But it's just, I get back to this, it's because of the historical mm -hmm. significance of that book and what it means to the comic book industry that I just can't put anybody ahead of those two guys. It's the same thing that happened when we did the Green it, Lantern show. It, yeah. can't, it can't be denied what Grell and O'Neill and Adams did did for that yep. character it, it's it's just like their work is so iconic yeah. right like green arrow they, without them three we would not have the character we have today. no no we would not and so even though i'm choosing denny o'neill and neil adams i yeah. want to give a huge huge amount of respect to mike grill because again i've never had this where the same guy was second as my writer yeah. and my artist seeing grill was my first introduction to green arrow so yeah no. Well, yeah, then that makes the huge what an introduction, that, yeah. right? That makes a huge that it makes a huge deal. Um, yeah. but you know, the, 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 those are my guys, and I, I love uh, I love the characters. And Mike Grill, you know, Mike Grill is just as close as you can be. That is a that is just a whisker, you know, away from me picking him. And again, it just gets back to the historical significance is the reason I can't. All right, good choices. Uh, for me, I <laughs> I'm just going to go with the easy comp out, but I got a, I got backup choices. I'm going to tell you, I went with Adams and Grell as my, you know, I have to because those are just the iconic classification of Green Arrow to me. So that's who I really lean to. But if I had to choose, if I could not choose those, let's say, I would have chosen um, Ed Hannigan and Otto Schmidt. Ooh. for his work he did on rebirth as well say uh, and again, I did volume two. just just go out be out in left field with me please i'm okay all alone just, i'll be out in left field with you, all right <laughs> there we are so i chose those as two guys as backup it's just because i felt like choosing adams and grow would be like the the two obvious choice you know so that's where i went with those so you're choosing mike grill as the writer neil adams as the artist yes Great. yes yes i so am which uh for all you guys i know tim's answer which which uh, arrow costume do you like the best? I like the feathered cap one. Yeah, that one. Do you I like that a lot. I, I, think like... I, I like the I like the feathered cap one too. I think. Yeah. Now, I like the Robin you, Hood. Hey, I like hey, the Robin Hood. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Okay. Do you mean the feathered cap one, like the action figure you have there, or the original one? Because this he one. had that cap in the original one. A red. He had a red feather. Yeah. Yeah. I like no, that. That's the one. That's the one I would. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the costumes that, that combine that look and the Mike Grell one. Like how the current one kind of has the combination of that, but, yeah. he's, got the, but he's got the yeah. hood. Bougie says Robin Hood. Though, uh -huh. if you think about it, like, uh, if you think about it, even though it looks cool with this character, a hood makes absolutely no sense because <laughs> everything with him is perfect. Peripheral. It's like perfect, you know, have to be able to perfect vision to be able to make these shots and you have this hood on and you got no peripheral vision, you know, it, yeah. you it's your hearing and yeah, it looks oh. really cool, but aesthetic, you know, aesthetically, but it makes, it makes zero sense. <laughs> you know, and you know, we also, even though we got, you know, the, we had the live action green arrow um, on Smallville. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had the, uh, the arrow TV show, mm -hmm. you know, that he's been in the cartoons Remember, we almost had the live action Green Arrow movie. Bougie and, has a point here. Fighting in masks doesn't make much sense either. No, that's true. Are we going to talk about capes? 
I no love capes. capes. I love capes. You saw what happened no to capes. Man and Watchmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Pam. Yeah, that's true. Pam, but, uh, remember Pam's remember comment. Dan, Dan just the ruined the hood with the logic. logic. <laughs> I hate it when you do that, Dan. Stop yeah, that. Way to go. For logic and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my God. Snoop we ruin says... things with the facts. Snoop says O'Neill and Adams didn't just write iconic stories for those characters. The power of those tales echoes across comicdom and changed comic storytelling. 110% there. Yeah. Gary, you yep. the comic shop you own is called Comic Logic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this. I didn't, I didn't choose the name, but it's a hell of a name. It, it is. is. It is. Great name. I love it. Well, I was saying, great remember, logo, too. Great logo we have, too. Yeah. Remember, uh, remember how close we were to getting a live action Green Arrow movie. Oh, the Supermax movie. So, holy it was called, shit, it was originally called Supermax, and then the title of it was changed to Green Arrow Escape from Supermax. That and movie would have been amazing. When was amazing. this? What, what, what era was this? I don't know. Uh, it, it was finally. It was in the um, early 2000s. I think 2008, they were still talking about making it. Like and, before and Zack Snyder happened. or right after he started? No, this is, yeah, this is before Snyder. Yeah. So God, this would have been so a great the, movie. The story of it was, for anyone that doesn't know, the story of it was is that in the beginning of it, Green Arrow has been, he's been the Green Arrow for about like 10 years or so. So everybody knows him. He's very well established. He gets um, framed for murder. Here's and where we're going to blow your mind, Bougie. Here you he go. He gets framed for murder, and he gets arrested, and he gets, since everybody knows who he is, his identity is revealed, he gets sentenced to Supermax prison. And that's the prison where all of the, the villains go, where they have all, and one of the writers even talked about how he was also like an architect. So he designed the prison when they were writing it, thinking of like, okay, if you have someone like Icicle, how do you contain him to contain his powers and all these different characters. So Green Arrow gets sent to the yes. Supermax prison where he's surrounded by all of these villains that a lot of them he helped he put, put in there. <laughs> so, he, so the beginning he gets arrested, he gets put there. Then most, you know, like the middle part of the movie, it's him trying to break out of the Supermax prison and he has to survive not only these villains that are there that he helped put there, but he has to team up with some of them to help break out of the prison yeah. so that he can get out. And then the end of the movie is him going and, you know, clearing his name. But I mean, tell me that doesn't sound like an amazing movie. Keith is right. This could have been one of the most original superhero movies of its time. Ah, when I it heard about be... Supermax, I was so excited about wow. it. I was like, that's amazing. This is going to be wonderful. And never heard never of got it. made. I never well, heard of it either. If you're interested in finding out more, all you have to do is Google it and you can read the full script. Oh, don't okay. tell me things like this, Dan. Well, we know like, what uh, I am writing right. it down. <laughs> just like, just Google um, Green Arrow Escape from Supermax script, and it's like the second or third thing that pops up. It's a, uh, it, you just click on it, it's got the whole script there, just like the, um, the script. If you're interested in the never made George Miller Justice League movie. Justice League Mortal, oh. you can get that script online and and read the whole thing. Wow. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> go ahead and wrap this uh, Dan show is up. breaking hearts. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Dan is always breaking hearts. Heartbreaker. Uh, Dream taker. You know what? That was the green arrow mess around with Dan. The, remember the archer that was uh, the female archer that had like the broken heart kind of logo that was a villain? Yeah, Cupid, Cupid. that had like the obsession with him. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. all right ladies and gentlemen once again everybody in the in the uh comments thank you for joining us thank you for chiming in on the chats thank you very much we really appreciate that deeply uh i am your host Alex thank live you, guy sir. down below me is dan the man kelly over to the right there is the uncle uncle gary the rick flair of comics Woo! and to my right is the man with the voice of the silky -ness goodness. <laughs> silky the terrible. Goodness. Angels silky goodness. weep when I talk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Catch us next week when we dive into another character who we do not know yet because it has not been decided. Because Kyle <sighs> can't so, decide. Because I can't decide. So tune in next week, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good <laughs> night. And I hope you have a Hulk 180 day.
<laughs> we cannot end the stream. Go ahead, Dan. Unless we hear the magic words. That green arrow ah. shot an arrow in somebody's gaping hole. <laughs> with brown, with, with yeah, brown with lantern. With brown lantern. <laughs> oh, yeah, in the brown lanterns. That's right. With, yep. Brown lantern core is going to be forming. <laughs> oh. oh my God! All you right, all right. It is now. <laughs> Bougie says totally worth uh, turning exhumed off. Killer show. Uh, it yeah, it was a Thank gaping you, Bougie. Show. Thanks for hanging with us, bro. Yep. Okay. All right, now I can go. Love you guys. Right. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. One Excuse more. Me. Can I get one more? Gaping holes. Uh, gaping holes. Oh, Dan, that's wonderful. Yes. Nice. Right. Well done. Well done.